What's up, Pack? We are here for another episode of the Ask the Pack Leader Show. I am Steve Del Savio from Pack Leader Dogs here at the Maddie Ranch. We got Adam over here beyond the wheels of steel. I'm going to use that for the rest of our, our show. Oh, yeah, here. for sure. The best. And actually, they can see me now. So oh, they can see you. Doing, there you guys? go. There's Adam on the wheels of steel back there. He might start DJing at any moment. You ever any know. moment, yeah. But, yeah, we were just talking about... <clears throat> Uh, so what happened was we had to get rid of Jamie because no, I'm oh, just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's busy. She's got things going on today, so we couldn't do uh, have her for the podcast. But um, we're doing a little solo one today, and I guess it's a, a tag team one, right? Definitely tag you're team. You're in it today. Yep, yeah, perfect. Um, today we're going to focus on talking about puppy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, puppies, because you know this has been one that like we've been getting a bunch of the puppies for our puppy enrichment program which is going phenomenally by the way when people ask like how how are the results in your behavior modification program and i'm like they're excellent and then they say how are the results in your puppy enrichment and i'm like absolutely through the roof phenomenal Dude. like i don't even know any of the dogs that have been honestly if there are like reach out to me but i want to know if there's any of the puppy enrichments who are like struggling and failing right now like even if they're not around because i don't know any of them no, honestly, I think, Zero. I think they're thriving. And most oh, of them are, a lot of them actually ha, are now involved in our camp and coming to our camp every day up here Yeah, at the ranch, which is pretty awesome. But look, and the, I'm going to harp on puppies a little bit today because I've been seeing a lot of stuff. Um, and people are asking like a lot of questions about the puppyhood and adults and all this kind of thing. And <clears throat> it was something that I put a post the other day. I should have fucking gave this to you before. Oh, it's okay. I just want to read happen, it. I just want to read guys, it. This guys, by the way. Like, he'll think it just pops stuff. in my mind, yeah. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be good about like getting it um, on the screen if you needed it, too. Yeah, no, it's going to be like... Um, how do I go to my archive of like stories? It should be like right here, I think. Yeah, at the top. Top right. Um, hmm. Top right of what? And the main On your main profile? Yep, top right. Yep. Your activity? Yeah. Right? Uh, no. a, maybe activity, but it should be its own thing. Archive. Here yeah. we go. There it goes. Stories archive. Sorry, guys. On the fly. Uh, I just wanted to read it. Look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll put that down. Good song. So you guys can see. Can they see? The, the Just like the... Oh, wait. Hold on. We can at least see, like... We can't really see the words, no. But you see, like the girl, the, it's a, it's basically a woman on the top going. Hmm, oh right? yeah. So I said, if you don't understand or have limited knowledge about the psychology of a dog, and you decide to get a dog, you're likely going to need a professional's help. You can get the help right away in puppyhood. I put in parentheses prevention, or you can wait for behavior problems to happen and then get a professional to try and help you recover from the unwanted behaviors developed. Intervention which likely will never be as good as if you would have prevented it in the first place. The second way also requires way more time, effort, and money. Your choice. Yeah. That's a good one. Really good. Because what I'm saying there, and it's a way... Steve, are you using scare tactics? Maybe a little bit because I'm trying to... Everybody else is doing it. We're doing it for the good. I'm doing it in a way to try to prevent people from self-sabotaging, right? Yeah. And, and, and not on even realizing this could be a thing because once you skip puppyhood and you're into adulthood and the dog's already having all these issues, it's like, well, what do I do now? Well, I got to do, tra- I wish I would have done this in puppyhood. I wish someone would have told me. That's why I'm like, fuck, that's why I'm trying to tell you guys now how important it is to do puppyhood. So what I'm saying in that, and people say like, whenever I talk about imprint and, and, and puppyhood, people say, well, my dog's out of puppyhood. And what about rescues and all that? I'm, I, I, we, we work with tons of them, right? We work with tons of adult dogs, tons of rescues, tons of, and, and you can have amazing dogs like that. Even if they've been uh, traumatized or they had issues and they need rehabilitation, they can still turn out amazing, right? Now, if I'm taking one subject, right? And it's one, let's just say it's, a, it's, it's two brothers from the same exact litter, right? And then one goes to a human. So we have the same genetics is what I'm saying, right? right. Go to, one goes to one family, one goes to the other family. Family A knows dog psychology really well, right? Is high, uh, well, let's just, say, let's just say both families don't really know dog psychology that well. They just follow the pack leader page and they, they know it decently from watching all the, the, content, the free content and stuff. And they're like, you know, we don't really know it that uh, in the depth that Steve knows it. So I think we should get a professional here. And we're, we're new dog owners and we're, we've had a dog only once and it was an easy dog. So, uh, option A is those people, family A, they contact uh, Steve. Say, I want to get my, my puppy enrolled in your puppy enrichment program right away. 
Mm -hmm. right? Because I want to learn about this stuff. I want my dog to get the best socialization possible. I want them to start learning right from the get go. And I want to get ahead of this because I know that German shepherds can be fucked. Not German shepherds, but any dog can get messed up if they're not treated in the proper way or raised the right way. Right. Uh, family B says, we'll figure it out. This is, this is by the way, the far majority of people in the country in the world, by the way, is, uh, we'll figure it out. Let's see what happens. We don't know that much, but whatever. It's a dog. How hard could it be? They start doing all the, ah, puppy climbing all over, loving, letting them break all the rules, invade space. Um, no limitations, no rules in the house. They let them fucking fly through thresholds, no boundaries, eating shit, whatever. But it's not that bad in the beginning because the puppy's young, right? You could just move them away and just do stuff like that. But now the puppy's starting to get five, six months. And now the puppy's starting to guard his food. And now the puppy is starting to be really mouthy. And the, and the, and the, 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 the silly little puppy nipping is now starting to become an uh, adolescent biting. And it's really starting to hurt people, even though the dog's still playing. Yep. And then they're like, whatever. He's just a puppy. He's just young. They'll figure it out. You know what's so funny is from my, I've been, you know, I'm always on, on YouTube seeing the dog content. Mm -hmm. And I saw one from the Kardashian show. And really? it was, it was, it was, Court, uh, not Courtney. Who's the, uh, um, Courtney, Kim, and Chloe. It was a Chloe girl, right? And she had like a six month old bo boxer. She's there with her father. And her father's saying, like, this dog is a mess and you got to get this dog. And he, he's right, right? And then all of a sudden, what's there? Uh, she goes like this. It's, a, it's like a six month old boxer. She goes, it's just a puppy. It's just a puppy, right? So I'm not but making fun. Right? Yeah, but it's a boxer as well. Regardless. Yeah. yeah regardless. I mean, it's just a puppy, right? So that's the theory. So that's basically saying, um, I'm not sure what I'm doing, and it's just a puppy. So just let him be a puppy, and hopefully he grows out of it. That's, that's like the code word for that. Yeah. And I don't know whatever happened with the dog and stuff like that, but that's the thing is that like even on like a high, um, highly viewed show. People are seeing that in the media, right? And people in, all over the place are thinking, a puppy's going to just grow out of this, right? They're just going to finish this behavior. They won't really uh, continue like this, right? And I'm like, yeah, they, for the most part, they do it more than they don't continue what they were doing. So it's really important to get ahead of this in puppyhood. So be family A. If you're getting a dog, even if you're, look, I would make the invest, it's investment, right? I would make the investment, even if I thought I knew dog psychology really well. I would still make the investment to, to, to bring a professional in to get the expertise right from the beginning because this is a 15-year investment. That's what I'm saying. Like, And by the way, this can be a 15-year investment that can cost a lot of damn money that can uh, result in a ton of heartache, a ton of stress, a ton of anxiety, um, shuffling dogs around, worrying every time someone comes over, dreading taking the dog for a walk, dreading putting the dog in the car. All these, this is what we're dealing with. Separation, dog goes wild when you leave. All these things get developed and they get developed pretty quickly in puppyhood. And people think it's like, ah, it won't be that bad. Well, listen, once, the, once that door is closed, the door is closed. I love when we were listening to it. We listen, you know, all we do is listen to podcasts, right? So we're in the car. We were going, where the hell were we going? Yesterday? Was that yesterday? Yeah, dude. Holy hell. You know, that happened. Dude, and we were listening that, to that podcast, that happens the dog to you training a, podcast. That, yes. Like, Ivan, yeah. That happens to you a good amount where um, you're like, when was that? I feel like, I you like live, that was like you three live, hours ago. You live two days at a time, in two my days opinion. At a time. Could be like two, like you, like you live forty eight hours in twenty four hours, pretty much. <laughs> Interesting. You know what I yeah, mean? I know it's because I, like I was the, the, I had a thing the other day. On, I was, I, it was like one of the things. I wake up in the morning. There's nobody downstairs. Everything's like empty, right? And I'm just like thinking to myself, and I, I, I was like, I'm not gonna look at my phone right now. I said, is is today Wednesday or Friday? <laughs> and I seriously said, I'm not looking at anything. I'm going to really try to process this and figure this shit out. Yeah. And I was going through it and I was like, it's got to be Wednesday. I was like, it has to be Wednesday. And you're and like, like, I'm finally, not going to look at my phone too. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, it must be. I was like, no, it's Wednesday because, oh yeah, like the Ridgewood dogs. Oh yeah, it's got to be Wednesday because we did that. And then I look at fucking Friday because we no. did the Ridgewood dogs on Thursday. Right. And yeah. I'm like, but we do them Tuesday and Thursday. So that's where yeah. I got confused with. So yeah, I was just totally off in the days, but it's a good, I mean, I, I don't mind that because it just shows that like time is just flowing right by and I'm yeah. really realizing what you're, you're, you're technically in flow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Flow um, but you were saying about the podcast that we were listening to in the car. Yesterday. Yeah. So what I liked really about it was the, he was asked, um, it was with, um, they were asking Ian Dunbar, Dr. Ian Dunbar, right? Well-known guy in the dog world, been studying dogs forever. And they asked him, like, what do you think is more important, genetics or temperament? Uh, I'm sorry, genetics or, like, who raises the dog, how the dog is raised, socialization, right? And he said, well, this is my theory on it, which is prior to conception, he's a huge stickler on, like, breeding, right? But once that sperm hits that egg, 
then that is the end of genetics, right? Because yep. you're done. It's already done deal. Yep. Now the genetics are in. Now we're into, into the training and the socialization and all that stuff, which I thought was a very good answer that he said. It was a different way. And I, this is why I listen to all these things because lo- I'm so interested in everybody's perspective on it and not just uh, spewing mine. It's like, yes, this is my experience. This is all things I've done. But I think it's really important that once you get to a certain level that you network with other highly um, uh, experienced and skilled people to keep bettering yourself because the learning never stops. Like I love talking to Caesar about stuff. I'm, you know, I'm still growing when I'm talking to him. I'm, t- I'm listening to these podcasts and just little things that can take you like through the roof, you know? So that stuff is really important to me is like always, always uh, trying to find like, what is the next thing or what, what, how could I see this differently? Or what is this person thinking? And I don't do it based on because he's known like, yeah, he's known, but let me see why he's known. I'm going to independently see what is he saying and see if it agrees with what, based on my history and what I've done with dogs. But I really like that one um, about the genetics. Yeah, because genetics are, it's a huge part of, of the makeup. Like you can't make a, uh, you can't make a, a Chihuahua a Rottweiler, you know? Yeah. That's genetics, right? Right. However, they're both dogs, right? And they both, know, they both understand dog psychology. So they'll have um, some different traits, right? But for the most part, fundamentally, they're going to be uh, a very similar animal that will, you know, one of them herds, the, 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 the Rottweiler. One of them has more power, is bigger, you know? Like, those are the things that come out of it. So genetics, yes, they matter 100%. And I think it's not, uh, you know, I think genetics isn't also talked about as much because of some of these dogs that I work with, I've, I, I've been saying like, this dog seems more on the like primal side than it does on the domesticated side to me. You know what I mean? Like there's more primal like attributes to it. And that, by the way, you need a higher level of dog psychology as far as I'm concerned, because you have less um, domestication of that animal. So they just behave in a primal way, just the way they are about like certain like food and being touched and like. I'm talking from puppyhood stuff that I'm like, this is like a little bit more of a primal guy here. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can see it a lot and you see it a lot too. Like, uh, what's his name? The puppy we have, um, Enzo, the a Malamute. And right. I'm like looking at him, he's not that primal, but you can, you, you get the feel of like the wolf there and like that yeah, kind of thing, like, I can where see this animal saying. came from, you know yeah. what I mean? And how we have to honor that. It's so important to honor like where they came from and who they are, who they truly are. But yeah, the, the biggest thing that I'm really trying to, to, sell and it's not selling me i don't care where you do it but the biggest thing i'm trying to sell you for your own good is to get the help from the beginning from the right people though because this is the, this is the catch 22 in this whole thing is how many people come here and they've been through the trainers and they've been i've been through this trainer and that trainer and then now i'm here with you like the guy on the weekend what did he say he was like he goes yeah I, I reached out to you guys initially about the uh first puppy training package and then he could not pull the trigger then he did the he wanted to do the puppy enrichment program and he couldn't pull the trigger and then it was, um, can I, can went, I give a little context to that? Yeah. It sucks. Cause he was just doing, he was going through a little bit of like, um, the puppy was going through an illness. Yeah. So he was not able to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then while he was explaining that, I was like, you know what? I kind of like when people are, are like, uh, coming to us as a, almost like a last resort yeah. because they've tried everything else already where they're like, it's good. Because we'll it's do urgency. anything. Yeah. And yeah. we'll do anything you tell us to do, yeah. which I kind of do. Which, I, which, that, I, which is the, which is the positive side to the whole thing. If you're yeah. looking for a positive and the people who go through the other ones, is the positive is that they're they're way more committed usually because I've already invested a bunch of money and now it's like they're coming to one that's a little bit of a higher priced option now as well so they're like this got to work because I'm I'm done with this yeah. and I'm like good you pushed yourself to almost rock bottom right. with your dog right. now I can I can like bring you out of there yeah but would it be more ideal to just get that puppy from puppyhood yeah For sure yeah like right from the- so then now it's like up to now where now we're dealing with a, an older dog who's got issues and has you know, like the separation anxiety, destroying anything. And the guy, the dog was eating shit off the floor the entire time. And that's just how it's going right now. Mm-hmm. They need help because it's like, you know, and then uh, is, is this dog going to grow out of this shit? People will think, or like, what, what, what am I missing? And da, da, da. And I said, look, 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 when you, go, when you, when you, when you go this, so he, he did, look, this is what I'm saying. He did a ton of research, yeah. the guy, right? And I'm not talking shit as you know, this is probably going to be a client of ours, right? So yeah, it was, well, sure. I mean, it is because we did an assessment, Yeah. but I'm just, I'm just using this as a representation for all people to understand, which is like, he said, I did a ton of research. So through the research led him to believe that the positive only training was the way to go. Right. So he did that. And he said it worked for some things, of course which is probably the things of creating behaviors, but didn't work for all these other things, which were probably the things of stopping behavior because by definition, positive reinforcement will enhance behaviors yeah. and 
punishment and corrections will stop behaviors. Right. And when you hear the word punishment, if you start going, ooh, don't even own a dog. That's my right. recommendation. Because the word punishment just means like simply saying no to a dog and just touching the leash or um, um, that, that, that that's literally the most the most basic level of punishment is like, yeah. no. Or a consequence, like a you consequence. were saying. You were saying also consequences. Good and bad consequences you were, in life. You were saying consequences for surviving too. Yeah. Right? How, to stay, how to stay alive. Yeah, yeah that, that was when we talk about like the consequences of life of like the, uh, the gazelle who goes down by the water who's thirsty. Yeah. And uh, no other gazelles said, hey, there might be these huge saltwater crocodiles that could end your life in here. Yeah. Or they never had the experience of even seeing one or whatever happened. They get, and they get, and death is a consequence of that, right? But understanding that there might be crocodiles there, they're more cautious. And the consequence of that is you get to drink and you get to stay alive, yep. right? So, yeah, that's that. that it, I don't know what I can do to get this puppy thing. And this is like, you would, people would be saying like, dude, why are you pushing this puppy thing? Are you trying to sell us something? And the thing that I would be selling would be the lowest ticket item that we have. Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? To get it in. It's true. like you have to do some sort of training. And if you do puppy training package with us, it's like probably the cheapest one that we have available. If you go to adult dog training, it costs more money. Why? Because it takes more time, more effort, and for you, more money because I got to do way more work. We yeah. have to do way more, way more work with that dog. We have to destroy all the bad habits this dog's learned, which takes time. Then the dog goes through a confusion phase where it's learning some new but still practicing some of the old. Then we finally extinguish a bunch of those old. Now we got to get into the repetition phase of getting, as opposed to a puppy, blank slate. It's like, this is what we're doing from the beginning. And we're just doing, this is what we do. And then doing repetitions. Because that habit destruction, how, how easy it for, is it for you guys at home to just break a habit? Is it really easy? Like, oh, I'm just going to stop smoking cigarettes today. Or can you just do it like that? It's like simple. Or stop drinking coffee. Or stop, stop eating, eating junk food. Eating sugar is a big one. Stop, stop slugging down sugar. Is it yeah. easy to just stop that stuff? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're talking about something chemically with the, some of these things, but um, stop watching your phone. Stop going on YouTube. Don't pick up your phone today. Let me know how that works out for you. Right? Yeah, that one's that one's. Really Don't touch your phone. It's hard to do. It's hard to break a habit. So think about how hard it is for us to not pick up our phone and scroll and like and do all this kind of stuff. That's like asking a dog who's learned to. Um, go crazy about eating its food and then got that like that level of excitement while eating and then saying hey hey no more of that the dog's like whoa I'm having a hard time not picking up this phone dude this is like oh I don't want you know so we have to go through all that phase and then do it so that's what I'm saying is like is it a lost cause with adults absolutely not there you absolutely can have tremendous results with it you can have tremendous growth with your dog get to a balanced state with your dog and have an, an amazing relationship with your dog the question becomes is how out of balance is the dog? How, tra how much trauma has this dog been through? How stressed out is the dog? How long has it been practicing? How intense has it been, been doing it? That will determine our level of um, growth that we can basically make, like how much we can get to. Because if you're g going back to my original thing, if you have two brother German Shepherds, one goes to A, one goes to B, now this dog has developed all those issues and all that shit. There is no possible way, in my opinion, that – Let's just say that dog has uh, got attacked in the dog park. It's been wild for the first year of its life in the house, biting, barking people, um, separation anxiety and all that. And the other one was Nika, okay, and was raised our way, right? There's no possible way in my mind that that dog can ever achieve the level of, of growth that Nika will achieve if both people are continuing to work with the dog with equal amount of time and, and stuff like that. So that's what I'm basically saying with it is – uh, what, is your dog ruined and destroyed and there's no coming back from it? Absolutely not. But is there a limitation on the potential of the dog from that point forward? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the truth. And, I, and that's just what I've seen in my life working with these dogs and talking with like people who have worked with thousands and, and hundreds of thousands, millions of dogs and stuff throughout the years that has been the deal. So you can make the choice. And, and to me, it's like the uh, – oh, someone said something to me recently and i was like it's um they were like what if what is like uh fuck i can't remember what it was now it was something that i was like that's basically like playing a roulette it was like i was like it's playing like it's a gambling thing and i can't remember exactly what it was but it had Dude, something i'm, also, to do with I'm also trying to remember something that you were saying with the puppy stuff too by the way you yeah. were saying something like um like the potential or i think you might have just said it a yeah, second ago with, with nico but you said it in a different way where you were saying something like uh um 
like the potential gets like dropped basically. Yeah, the like, potential of the of what the dog can actually be. Yeah. If you don't take the time to do it from puppyhood, yeah. like the way you did it with Nico. Yeah. That the potential for the dog, it's never fully met. No. Because it's like you know not. Yeah, I don't know. It I, is. It's it's you not. You were saying look, something like that. I forgot what it was. Any dog trainer who tells you that like, hey, you didn't do any any of proper socialization, you did no training, you did nothing in imprint period, and that and then from that point forward, then you did all the training. If you. Th- no one who understands dogs would ever say that that dog is going to turn out as good as if you started from the beginning from puppyhood. Right. That's what you were saying. So my biggest yeah. issue with, with what we do here is not that what we do because our, our, our pack knows this, but we need the pack to go like tell more people about yeah. this is you have to start understanding this shit in puppyhood. This is a six month. I mean, really it's eight months, but it's like a six month window yep. right there. That you have like technically six almost because of the fact that you're not with the puppies. That's what I'm saying. Beginning six. Of so the it's life. like yeah. six six months basically. You have of like an opportunity, open window to yeah. open door to make shit happen. And if you don't, that door, that door closes, and now we're off into a lot of like trying to do our best to pry that door back open and squeeze some shit in there. And I like that analogy. That's actually a good one. Like the door closes and then it's like, you need like some professional, like the locksmith to come right. and like pry that thing open. And we're like, calm this, calm this, calm this, calm this. Let some of this excitement out. Boom. Close, close <laughs> yeah. a little bit, you know, like, yeah, yeah. okay, that was good for today. When we come back tomorrow, we got to do, we got to pry that shit open again. Dude, your analogies, bro. It's right. Like, and then you, the dogs you... are like growling and showing teeth and that's the doors like really jammed and all that shit because it doesn't want, it's like un- unsure of what's happening and all this you've shit. Called, you've called yourself a, a locksmith so far and you've called yourself Fireman. a... Uh, a fireman before yeah. putting out fires, yeah. but you've also called yourself a dog translator. Yeah. So dude, yeah, yeah. all those analogies are good for people to understand what you actually, you know, the girl, one of the sessions we had over the weekend, the girl said, she goes, I just wish they could just talk and tell me what they're like feeling or thinking or doing. I'm like, they do. They yeah, just they don't do. do it in a verbal human English way. Right. She's, he's telling you through his energy, right? Exactly who he is. He's showing you through body language, how he's feeling about certain things. You know, yeah. he's through, through his activity and his behavior. He's showing you exactly like what pack position he is. You know, mm-hmm. you just don't know how to see it. You don't understand the, the, the rules or the psychology of dogs and how they see the world and how they behave. Right. You know, yep. cause it's like, like I always use the, I love, I love asking people like, so you do this with a puppy. What do you think the mom would have done with the puppy? What do you think an adult dog would do with the puppy? You know what I mean? Like yeah. how would they behave if in the same, let's just say the same thing is happening. Like, uh, puppies there. Okay. And a human enters the room. What are they doing? Probably laying on the floor and going, Oh, come climb all over me. You're in, you're here for my entertainment and to make me feel valued. Like that's really what they're saying. Yeah. Right. And then you bring an adult dog up there with the puppy. They're coming in. Their first thing is going to be, what's the deal with this puppy? That's actually something you need to Who send me. Who are they like? Are Max, they respectful? Max and Zoe, you needed to send me that video. Did you? Oh, I didn't send you it? No. Shit. But you have it on your Android though. That's the only problem. I can put it in Dropbox. Well, you know what? Um, I want you to like be able to take over this TV if you wanted yeah. to, too. Um, I can show you that real quick. Yeah. Can I set it up for you real quick? Have you passed me your phone? Mm, I could do let's it. Just do, let's just do that for the next one. We'll, we'll do that part off the air of showing me how to do this shit. Because uh, it's, it's just one video. It's one video. So if you pass me your phone, I can actually put it up there. Okay. I can throw it up there while you're, while you're st- keep talking about this. Um, well, I just posted the story of it. Oh, you did? Yeah, I put it in. Okay. So if you posted a story of it, then I'll, I'll, I'll put it up there. Yeah. Okay. It's like the, I think it's the last story. Okay. Look at this shit. I'm in my, I'm in my archive. <laughs> Love your favorite song. Look at this. Oh, wait, hold on. This one year ago. Tonight, Sunday, May 3rd, 5 p.m. Talk with Caesar Milan. Nice, dude. Nah, yeah, that's the that's the live that you that's were doing. Live. Let's yeah. do one with him. Right, let's let's get him on another live soon. Okay, cool. Uh, there's some stuff we got to talk about too about yeah. all the things we're doing and everything. All right, so this is okay. You have volume here. Or this not? is the deal here. Um, I believe so. It's all right if you don't. Here it goes. So watch, watch the, the dog in the top right. Go to the next. Go next. Back to the boy. Boy. Go. Mm-hmm. Boy, Watch it again. Yo, Max looks so good right there. Huh? Does it cut off? It, it cuts off or what? It what? Yeah, it stops there. Yeah. Oh, so, so he's is... got his toy there. The puppy, this puppy's barking his face off, but not coming into his face, so he doesn't care about that. This puppy's doing all right, and then Zoe comes in. So I'm just gonna take. Yeah. Put in my space. I didn't invite you in. Max you didn't so earn that shit yet. You didn't he looks earn that. So cool, dude. 
right? So, by the way, like R.I.P. to Max. He was the man. Yeah, he used man. to come. Uh, here goes. Here goes a little bit more of it on their page. Good boy. Good boy. I didn't see this part. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Look at him. Look at him. Baby Zoe, dude, it's so crazy. Good boy. So the dog, just so you guys know, the dog right up there, is Zoe. Yep. And she's she comes to camp. That's a warning right there for Max. Um, <laughs> She comes to camp now all the time. Yeah. She was a maniac when she was a puppy. Yeah. Boy. Look at the growling. Boy. Boy. I hear how many people would say, what a mean dog that white dog is. Just let the poor little puppy have it. And that's just saying, absolutely not. That would create a lot of imbalance. Right. And teach this puppy. Dude, Max does really good with that. It's so cool. And by the way, so you guys who don't know, Max was super friendly dog. Oh, yeah. Super social with dogs. Great super dog. social with people. Like, highly, highly socialized dog. John, I'm so happy to, John did an amazing dog. Yeah, good job, John. Him. And honestly, dude, he looks so cool. Here. Yes. I'm glad we're reminiscing on this stuff. So, look. Okay, I'm going to give you guys something else here. This is, this is something that is okay to let happen, but you need to know your own dog for this. Right. Because this can get bad, right? That's yeah. American Bulldog. He's American Bulldog. He's a power guy. So... He's obviously very well balanced and was raised the right way. So he's good at it too. And that's also genetics in there too. So yeah. he's, he's, he's a middle of the pack guy who's not trying to be like super claimy of all this shit. He's just like, I have my bone, like give me some space, young puppy. And you see how this, Zoe reacts to it. Yeah. Okay, fine. This for me, it's, it's, it, it can happen too many times, right? Yeah, it's yeah. happening and happening, happening. So what you're, and Max may not be uh, strong enough to get Zoe to really understand so what he might have to start doing is start increasing the intensity, right? So then he's going to say, the next time I'm going to come, I'm going to fucking really do it this time mm -hmm. to teach it. And, then, row, 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 and he makes contact. And then Zoe has a bad experience, traumatized right. experience. And, and he had a bad experience because of it. And then it doesn't end up going that well. So for me, like when this shit was going on with Nico and Jake yeah. in the beginning, remember Nico would be like, oh, look, there's Jake. I'll just walk on his bed. <laughs> and Jake would correct the, sh the shit out of him, like in a good way though, right? Like, yeah. Row. And you go, what? The? I would bring him back. Hey, relax. Jake, you relax too. I know why you did this. You guys don't do this stuff. Nico, you're not allowed on his thing. I'm not actually having this conversation, but that's what I'm doing by bringing them back and settling them together. Right. So it's one time, and I would actually agree with the adult dog if they did it in a way like Max was doing it, which is give me space, please. Yeah. You know? But this to me, look at that. Look at that. That's a lot there. That's hard. Head. <laughs> You know. <laughs> Always licking each other's ears. While that's good. Sleep. So that's that's all. But so look at what happened. Had to happen there at the end, which was, uh, what's his face? Um, um, Max had to do it so many times that he had to do just what I said. I never yeah. saw that part of it. I only saw that one clip that I put in the stories. But he, he had to increase the intensity now to get Zoe to pay attention because she was not getting it. So then the owner had to come. So the Jeanette had to come. Say hey. To, to like add, so mm. Jeanette knows now that that's not the best approach she put it in there she did, that was before she worked with us but it was one where right in that moment it should be it could have been hey on the first or second one and then followed through with Zoe um, I agree with what Max is doing you need to you don't, you don't go to other dogs and go in their face when they're when they have an object or a toy or they're eating that's a rule you teach a dog Nico knows when Jake's eating you don't go by his ball when Jake has a bone on his bed, you give him space and walk by him. That's how you keep the peace. Yep. They understand. So I'm, I'm not having a, a house of dogs who are going to competing for resources. If they're competing for resources, then, then you have right from the get-go, you know for a fact that, that they're, they're sorting out leadership on themselves. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, that's an opportunity there to within the – it's like I always look at it like a business. It's like – those are two employees. Like that's the senior manager there yeah. and the new like rookie coming onto the thing saying, why do we have to do this? Blah, blah, blah. And then the, the manager keeps telling them you're doing this, you're doing this. Eventually the CEO needs to get involved and, t and tell the new one, Hey, when the manager tells you this shit, you got to listen to what they're telling you. Right. You know what I mean? So that's really for our job as the leader of the pack is to, to be able to be the one who's the authority figure. It just works better that way. The issue is, is when you get incompatible dogs where the dog is stronger than you. <laughs> I know. That's where we get into problems. And, and then people say, what's with this dog? It's not the dog. It's the human behind the dog and the compatibility is off. That's it. So the better you get with dogs, the more you can work with all different types. Like that was what, for me, right? In the beginning, 
like the the insecure and softer dogs were very challenging to me because I was more high octane kind of thing. Like give me the give me that Roddy with the with the teeth and give me the Doberman, give me the pits, give me the like, and I because I could get away with it with those guys because yeah. those guys were like I'm bringing the fight to you and I'm like let's go yeah. you know and I could deal with them but like not fight them back but I would deal with that stuff because they were coming bringing the fight but the other dogs like that the insecure ones and the shy ones they don't even want to bring the fight they want to get away. So for them, I, like bringing, you have to bring your energy way down and get them to come in and understand and trust and all those things. So it takes time to do that stuff. So that was for me, my big growth over the time was doing that. And then I realized that out of every, okay, this was something I was going to say too, is that getting back to the puppy thing, out of everything that I do, we don't, we don't, listen, we definitely don't post enough about the puppies and we've been talking about that lately about how, cause it's so important. Yeah. Like this is more for not what we're trying to do business wise. We have puppy programs. We have adult programs we have um board and train we have training consultation we have puppy training sessions we have all options for people right but my recommendation would be to take the cheaper route whether it's with me or anybody in the freaking world i don't care just make sure they understand dogs yeah. go the cheap uh go the cheaper route meaning not the cheaper route of the trainers go the ch go the most expensive or the best that you possibly can but at puppyhood but do it in puppyhood because yeah. you're going to save so much money and and heartache long term i'm telling you it's like the amount is it was shocking to me as I forget is I answer so many of the messages in DM in the d direct message one on one. You're lucky, by the way, that I'd even spend my time doing that shit. <laughs> but but like I do all that one on one stuff. But then when people come for sessions and stuff, they're, they feel like alone. And I'm like, wow, you don't understand how many people are, are messaging me from globally that are dealing with the same issue you are. And they're like, oh, thank God. Yep. So that's why I did that post the other day of like, send me your video, send me your um, your questions and I'll answer them in videos because I'm going to start, start, oh, this post, video, this post, and straight to the face or if I need to show something, we're going to answer a bunch of them. Like we can't answer all because some of them are going to be the same or they don't make sense or whatever, but we're going to pick a ton of them to do videos on. Yeah. I want to do that because it's really important. I but actually, what I was saying I actually is like, got some of those questions here ready for you okay. today if you wanted to. So what I was saying is like the out of all the things I do, people know us. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, this is a, my assumption too, but mm -hmm. as like the ones they can, they can take on all these dogs and they can, we can bring the aggressions and the this and that. Yes, we do do a lot of that stuff. And I started my career with like a lot of the worst of the worst, you know what I mean? So that's where it got like the, we got the reputation. I was showing the before and afters and people, Oh my God. But then sure enough, I was getting all the aggressions and stuff. Of course. You know, it also and goes I, in phases. Cause we did have puppy, a good amount of puppy stuff Yeah, at one point. Yeah. And then, and then that was early in the coronavirus too. Yep. Yeah. People and were, now we're going to get another, another, yeah, another, another uh, resurgence, another round of it. But yeah. now it, it's, it's funny how it went. Like it's like over the last year of this Corona thing, like how it went from puppies to adolescents to separation anxiety, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and, and tons of dogs who aren't socialized. I want to yep. remind me about talking about socialization too. Yep. That's a really important one. Cause people don't even understand how to socialize or what yeah. socialization is for a dog. Is that a question? Or it is a question? question. There is a question? Okay, yep. perfect. Um, so what I was going to say was that of all those things, yes, if you bring me the pity who's, who's killed a dog, which we just had, mm -hmm. by the way, and can we, can we help you with that dog? Yeah, but you're going to be in management. You know, that dog's never going to be off leash in a park. Just, um, I shouldn't say never. I, I don't want to say never, but it's likely that you're going to have to manage that situation. Like that dog is around other dogs and they already have the experience of, of, of ending another dog's life. <laughs> There is definitely potential there for issues. So you're going to have to be in a management thing. But doing that for all those years, we were dealing with that so much that I had this like revelation one day. I was like, this is never going to end. Yeah, no. Like I was like, we're, 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 what do they say the thing about the shit up river or whatever? What's the saying? Shoving yeah. the shit up river or something. Something, you know something like that, but it's also but like. You know what I'm saying? Against the tide or whatever you're, yeah, you're just or like, like pushing a rock uphill or whatever. Yeah, thing, whatever yeah. it is. Like, I'm just like, no matter what I do here, more are coming. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, we solved these two dogs and then here comes seven more. Right. We just solved those seven and here comes 16. And right. it's like getting worse, right? So then I was like, God, oh, we have to do something on the front end of this to stop the bleeding. Yeah. And which is? Puppy arrangement. Pre Puppy prevention. program. And then maintenance, which is the adventure camp. Yes. So I'm like, let me, we got to do something totally different. This is what literally happened years ago and I'm sitting in my house. I was like, so now that's when it shifted to, we need a ranch because yeah. we need the space to do this for these dogs and we need to have a camp. So we got to get this camp going. So we have them and then we got to get these dogs in puppyhood and then show the people how to do it in puppyhood and then put them into the camp. So they're getting their, their, um, 
what did I call it just there? I just called it uh, their maintenance, like their maintenance, maintenance and yeah. their training and their, their socialization and all these things in the healthy way to keep it going. So what I was, I think I said it to you the, the yesterday we were driving back from the city. I was like, you know, this is so damn cool to actually see these things come to fruition. Like, it's like, like well, I re you remember the years ago in the mind, like being like, I think this would work. But then being able to believe in it enough, like ask questions and you talk to people and you get the feedback. Don't just like see like, I think this is an idea. It's just going to work. I'm just going to do it. It's always good to get feedback, but be careful to get feedback from because yeah. the people in lack are going to tell you that won't work. That's I don't like that. that. You need to talk to high performing people. So we can get into that too. The people around you, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yep. That, that was in the dance. But it's so true. Like, like who are you around? And that show me your friends, show you your future is also one for the dogs who come for camp. Yeah. Because who are your dogs hanging with? Are your dogs hanging with the local daycare dogs who don't really have much training, who go wild and bite each other and piss in the fucking uh, the square box or they run in the dog park? Those are, those are the friends. And that's what your dog will likely become. Is your, or is your dog coming here and going for a bike ride to start the day? Mm -hmm. Then going for a pack walk with a, with a group of dogs. Then going into a social environment with dogs where we're, now we're running. Now we're just chilling. Now we're just mingling. Now we're doing place. Now we're stopping. Now we're getting leashed up. Now we're going back for another walk. Now we're going to go in and do treadmill. Now we're going to do place inside. Now we're going to, you know what I mean? Like, and then they're all, yeah, what's next guy? Yeah. Like people hear that probably. And they're like, that sounds like a lot of work. Dogs want to work. Yeah, they do. They're dying to work. They want, they're like, give me something. I want to be fulfilled. I want to be challenged. You get these people who get, and then the people who get working breeds, they get a German shepherd. And they're like, this guy is great. He's not crazy. You got him. You got a machine. Yeah. You got one that wants to work. You got a high performance dog who's like, come on, what are we doing people? And then the human's like, uh, we just sit and we just watch, um, billions all day long on TV <laughs> and eat popcorn and eat sugar and don't do really do much. And then they go like this. You're do this dog is fucked up. The, do he, the dog is saying, what's with you humans. It's sitting in this box, just watching that shit all day, you know? Yeah. So this whole topic about about the puppy stuff makes me think about Caesar, and about he he you mentioned that to him that you're gonna be doing puppy stuff, and he was like, man, this is perfect. You need to do that. Yeah. But for said, him, but yeah. for him, he never really got into it so much. So no, he he does, he's, you know, he's the one who really came with the prevention. And we love Caesar, by the way. We of course we yeah. really respect and he, love he, Caesar. He came with prevention before in, all the sayings. I mean, he came up with so many of them. It's amazing. Like even the prevention before intervention versus intervention, huge one. That's like so obvious, yeah. right? And and but you actually took that and you ran with it, and you're like, yes, prevention. So I'm gonna start well, with more puppies. So, you yeah. know, I, look, I ask. This is the thing. This is like I listen too, right? Especially like, look, uh, the, the pack leader. Ask the pack leader. Okay. I'm the pack leader here because I'm the authority with the dog thing and I'm teaching you guys. But when I go with somebody else who's a pack leader, because you can have multiple pack leaders in all industries and things. When I go with Caesar, I'm, he's the pack leader. So I'm saying, what does he have to say? I need to listen here. I'm going to do way more listening than talking right now. Yeah. Because this guy is an insane amount of wisdom, mm -hmm. insane amount of talent, insane amount of skill. I need to listen, absorb this shit. Show me your friends, show you your future. Caesar's one of my friends. So that's a good friend to have because he's going to be what's next. Let's do some more shit. Let's grow. Let's be positive. Let's help these dogs. Let's change the world. Like I'll tell you that Caesar was the one who, who opened my eyes to the mind on being able to, to, to dream big. I would say, yeah, his dream. When he said, we need to change the world. Like, it's not a thing of like, I hope one day I could change the world and you just talk shit and then nothing really happens. Right. Yeah. You don't take any action. Caesar's like, we need to. We are, we're in it, we're doing it, and we must. It has to happen. The world needs us. It's de desperate for us, right? Yep. So we have our pack here watching this show. His pack, which is a lot of them are, are, are tied together. Mm -hmm. You guys are following. Other trainers who are also doing this kind of stuff. And then you, you, we get more of the community involved, and we start growing this energy. That was the one that I saw recently, too. Oh, my God. Another good video that I posted. <laughs> Send him away, bro. We'll play them all. It was a great like, one. It's a kid. You posted it? Which one? No, no, no. I put it in the Slack. Did you see it the other day? You probably didn't um, watch it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I can put it well, on. Maybe here. I didn't, dude. Maybe I didn't put it in there yet. That's probably why. Probably why I didn't watch it. No, you got it. Because the kid all, all around business. Yeah, I think so. It's a little kid talking. Yeah. Where the hell is it, though? I got you here. Okay, put it up. It talks about like the the, the, the the power of like the group. You know? I gotta be honest, I don't know if I did watch this. Let me see. 
But you have it? I have it here, but okay. I'm just trying to remember if I didn't. Let's, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, because it's it's like the the people are, the, the the power. It's literally the kid is describing the power of the pack, and it's like this little. That's kid. awesome. How does he even know this shit? That's age, awesome. Which is this like guy? Amazing. Yeah. Sweet. Look at this shit. Let's see if I can play this. Because most people focus on competing instead of working together. They don't wow. focus on the bigger picture. If you compete, you turn the table in the world by yourself. If you work together, you can change the world with another person. The power is strong. Dang, dude. Look at that kid. Okay. Is wow. he hired for work? Is he hired? Is he looking for work? Yo, Why you... are you, bro? Right away. Those are the kids, dude, by the way, where you see that. And I've seen that even growing up. Um, those are leaders, bro. Fuck yeah. Through and through, you know what I'm saying? Like, You know what I want to know right there? Let me see the parents. I want to see the parents. Absolutely. Because I want to see how they rate. I mean, who knows what the kid turns out. Yeah. But from what I'm seeing right there, is what, this is we saw it's eight seconds of the kid. He looks like, for whatever reason, he plays sports. But yeah, know, but but between you and I, like uh, we, we play sports as well. So we really understand that dynamic. I, like, I have no team, idea. Team like, play, team mentality. And this mentality. gets into, what, into imprint, into all these things. So this kid is around somebody. He has to be. There's no other possible way. He's, yeah. he's around people who are thinking this way. Yeah. Which I want to hear that. Benefit to him. I want to hear that again. This is powerful yeah, stuff. Let's because most people focus on competing instead of working together. They don't focus on the bigger picture. If you compete, you turn the table in the world by yourself. If you work together, you can change the world with another person. The power is strong. <laughs> Passionate too, dude. That yeah, guy. it's a good speaker already. Really good, really good speaker. Reminds me of me. Man, strong, <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah. He's probably from New York. He's definitely from New York. You can tell the accent. Yeah. I'm sure you would be able to pick that up. Yeah. He, he, I, I couldn't really tell. Like um, <laughs> he, should, he might as well be. But yeah, how awesome is that? And I, I, so sent good, that, I sent that to the team because it was a way of saying like, that's really the, what I'm trying to explain and what Caesar brought up about the power of the pack. Look, Caesar could try to change the world on his own, but it's going to be, he's, like the kid is saying, it's, on, it's himself. So he had to form people around who can do it who can yeah. spread the spread the positive energy you know what i mean and that's what we're trying to do internally here so i'm doing it with caesar the whole team is doing it with caesar but we're also doing it ourselves here within that that uh framework of you guys shouldn't be competing with each other in here uh, that's, that was my main point for the employees to understand is you don't need to be competing with the next person next to you if someone's doing something awesome then strive to be like that that's awesome that's a good thing to do and see what they're doing because Success leaves clues, which which my man Pena always says, right? <laughs> Success leaves clues. So I want to see what that person's doing and listen. With this back to the listening shit, of course. You, right? got a, you got an notification there? Yeah. I responded to that freaking. <laughs> what? I just responded to that on the Slack. This dude, it's so oh, powerful. Yeah, yeah. We can change the world as a pack, right? Yeah. Because look, if we're all working together, and who you sh- who who do you, who do you think you should really be competing with? Yourself, Yourself. right? Because who were you yesterday? Jinx. That's the only that's the only race you're on. Yeah, we all started in a different spot, so we all we're we're not. Who are you racing? You know what, I mean? you know what? We are all we are all basically equal opportunity by being born. Like we're yeah. alive and we're here. We're both here. Part. You and I are both Correct. here. You and know? then and then it's like if you want to look at people who in quote are more successful. Let's just say you see the person who can buy a yacht and all these things. They bought all this stuff and they seem balanced and this and that. Instead of going into the lack mentality of like, well, I'll never be that. I can't afford that. Fuck him. He probably is a piece of shit business guy. And he probably got daddy to pay for his stuff and just start assuming and coming up with all this negative stuff. Instead be like, I wonder how he got that. If that's what you want, by the way. Right. right? I wonder if, well, I wonder how he got that. Did he work hard? What did he do? To get Dude, it? I have so much respect. How did he do? I have so much respect for people that come from like, power Especially. or like or like last last powerful last names and they do that shit on their own they don't yeah. use the names yeah. they yeah you know put in that work yeah they have like the people who li- who, are, who were born in abundance basically they were yeah. born with money and things like that but they don't use it they want to do their own thing they create their own abundance because look this is what i always say too is like the i think i talked about this to you right when like this is years ago we talked about this where i was we saying, have a lot of we have a lot of talks by the way i know good amount of <laughs> driving all over this fucking new york I city know. area helping all these dogs and shit working yep uh, but i said like look so you can look let's just say you're talking about the kid who's born in a low-income area right mm-hmm. versus the you know and he it's a single parent home and like they're poor as hell and the school system sucks and better all this thing right of course, that's a that's that's not the best scenario to be raised in. It's not a high probability he's going to be a high performing kid, right? However, he has uh, his story of if he 
accomplishes and becomes successful in life could defeat anybody who was born above him. Yeah. So picture to go to the total opposite end. Our last president was Trump's Trump's kid, right? Born into a billion dollar family, born into someone who was the president of the United States, right? So what is someone going to say to him if if Baron Trump becomes successful in life? What what are they going to say to him? Yeah, well, easy when your father's Don. They did it to Don and his father. Yeah. Easy when your father's a billionaire. Easy when so he's got the detractors. No matter what that kid does, they're going to say shit about him. Right. Right. But the kid who comes from the low income fucking area who had no opportunity, basically a sliver of opportunity, and he just figured it the fuck out and got out of there. And that's the story people want to hear. That's the, that's the American dream. Being able to ha- be in this country and be able to create what you want in your life. You know, and then we can get into this is not a politics show, so I'm not going to get into politics and all that shit because people will start saying, well, this you don't understand. And they start yelling and screaming about it. I'm not interested in that shit. I'm talking about just human level stuff, you know. Yeah. Not left or right. I don't care. Don't give me that shit. I want to talk about the individual. I was just going to say that you are almost like in a neutral territory when it neutral. comes down to it. And yeah. balance is the biggest thing that we we, we talk about a lot. Yeah. Let's just find the balance and everything. You don't it's have like, to go into the politics, but so you can say something. It's so funny when I talk things. to people like, like about, like if I do talk about politics, when they start this whole thing of like, what team are you on? I'm like, I'm on no team with that shit. Just so you know. I'm right. on I'm on the team of this country doing well and people being happy and people living a full life and high performing life and and living their dreams and understanding the ebbs and flows of life and understanding there's downs, there's ups, there's wisdom in the lows. There's um, a lot of joy and happiness in the highs. Like that's, that's life. Not to hijack uh, Caesar's um, saying slogan, but uh, better humans, better planet. Yeah. Is what I'm into. It's, 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 that's what I'm into. Yeah. Because we become to a degree that, I mean, I guess we are really the superior species on the planet. We control everything. 100%. Like we could just, if we felt like it, the human species could wipe out all species on the planet. Including, like including that, each other. Which we are to a degree doing, by the way. Yeah, we are. Just fucking fucked up. We need to stop that. As I'm looking out into beautiful green, all the trees are blooming here. And it's nature. This amazing earth that we have that we don't use enough of. Can't really see we it behind it in me, a way, but it's amazing we get, back there. We get, we get into, the, the, into competing for money and, and, and power and fame and look at my followers and blah, blah, blah. Like the amount of people that I've actually worked with that I won't work with in the future. But this is years ago. I would be like, I'll take anybody, you know, I wanted to get anybody with any sort of notoriety. And then when I would see in person them going like this with their dogs, like, hold on, hold on, set the dogs up, set the dogs up. Look, look, look. <laughs> We're so happy as a group together and then click. And you and kick the they, dog away. They, they, they like go like this and then they <laughs> yeah. look and they're like, okay, it's good. So I knew you were going to say and that. And they go to the assistant. All right, post that on the thing and say that. Da, 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 da. And then they're like, get the fuck out of here. Dog. I don't right. care about you. I knew you were going to say that too. Who would want to live like that? Kick, kick the dog to the curb. You know how draining that must be? To yeah, not dude. be yourself and not be real? Oh, man. It's a lot Cause, of, cause a lot of work. That, that, that to me is literally lying to your audience. Yeah, for sure. And lying to people. Let me know how that's going to work to out. To sell. To sell. Well, yeah. Oh, I thought Dude, you said lying. You? I thought you said lying. I thought you said to self because it's also that too. You're lying, lying to yourself. To self, lying I'm to self. I'm such a good dog person. You're selling out too. I don't do shit with my dogs. Dude, do you remember what you were telling me yesterday? Can you tell the little story about the, the cyanide thing? I, 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 yesterday or during the drive home, oh, I was, yeah. I was kind of just focused on driving and I didn't give you much. Yeah. Uh, so response they did this, this thing. I saw this thing. It was like on one of the Instagram pages. Uh, someone sent it to me, and they go, uh, they did this thing with these influencers where they offered them like a high sum of money to promote their um, energy drink, right? And they yeah. called the drink Sayonara. Yeah, it's so good. But, but, but they spelled it C-Y-A-N-O-R-A, I think, or something like that. Yeah. So it sounded like Sayonara, obviously. Like, yeah. later, you're done. Like, exactly. kind of thing. Like, death, basically. Right. Like, see you later. <laughs> yeah. like, like, Sayonara. That. And in the, in the ingredients, the number one ingredient is cyanide, yeah. which is a poison that kills fucking people, right? right? Sayonara is so good. Sayonara. And then what did the, 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 those influencers didn't read, read the labels, read, yeah. didn't do anything, are showing the drink and, and saying, this is what makes me, blah, blah, blah. They never took the drink. They never tried the drink, but they're promoting it on their page. I will, Mark, all right, let's put it on the fucking record. I will fucking die before I do that with you guys. I know. I'll, go, I'll, I'll literally die before I do that. Someone can hold a gun to my head and say, you need to promote this bullshit, fucking fake crap so you can make money for us and you and at the expense of all your people who are loyal, who take their time out of their day to follow your shit and learn and da-da-da. Fuck you, dude. Pull the trigger. I don't care. Yeah. I'm not doing it. I'd rather pay for all of our own productions. I, that's fine. We Cre- pay for Create our own TV shows. Yeah, I don't care because we're in control of that. Yeah, dude. To a degree. Again, you know, it's the other thing. Well, it's a platform. Thing. It's a platform. We're going to create our own platform though, right? That's fine. Yeah. You know? Our, our own dog psychology platform. Yeah. 
So anyway, that's the that's the thing. Just be careful while you're out there. Yes. Because anyone can be an authority, you know. But yeah. like when someone's talking a big game, make sure you're seeing the big game in action too. That's why I post a lot and of stuff too. And ask questions too. Don't be yeah, afraid to ask questions. Yeah, and I don't do questions. it to, to, to toot our own horn, right? Yeah. I do it so people can see, ah, I'm seeing the results in real life here. So this guy seems to know like what this is. He's He must actually be doing this stuff. And it's not just a quick clip or it's not just uh, me standing there going like with that, with that. If your dog pulls on leash, you th- like it's like with the words and shit. But Dang, there's like dude. like where can I actually I to do one of those? Well, now we're not. No. So <laughs> so like where now can I, I actually see you doing it with the dog and stop talking about it? Yeah, you know, like I want to see it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So they, th- those things are good, but if they're just saying those things and they're saying those words, but they're not really putting it to action, it's like you know why? I see it. Yeah, and Cassie, are you there? No, I think they're <sighs> I had a, such a good thing with her yesterday. So I'm sitting on the couch, right? We're watching. She puts on one of these vet shows. She yeah. loves these vet shows, she, right? Yeah. So I come in and she, and I hardly ever watch them mm-hmm. because my life is flooded with animals. Sometimes I'll like, let me look at some, like see what the devils did last night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give me a break from the animals for a second. And I come in and I'm talking to her about it. I'm like, so what's to happen here and this? So, oh my God. All right. So remind me for the next podcast, I'm going to record like what, what it was a little clip during this and it was the vet in the vet office. It was a dog who had swallowed this cat toy, mm-hmm. swallowed the whole thing, goes through the dog, gets into the dog, ends up protruding, pops through Dang. the skin, Dang. right? And it went through the diaphragm, through the stomach, and all this kind of thing. The dog must have moved, ate this huge toy. Then the vets are coming on, talking about, by the way, that dog, they did surgery. The dog ended up dying, unfortunately, Damn. right? Yeah. And then the vets are coming on, saying, the amount of dogs that we get for eating foreign objects is out of control. They're saying it's nonstop. Yeah. Dogs are dying, isn't that? And I looked at Cassie and I said to her, I said, we, we have to keep this fucking, we have to help dogs. Yeah. Dogs need us. I said, dogs need us. And I was like being like a little like, she was looking at me like, is this like, what's he, he seems like really like a little intense dramatic. right now. Yeah. Like a little bit. I was like, I said, dogs fucking need us. I was like, you they need this. us. Dude, you've said this. I was like, the species desperately needs us because they're the ones who are going to help the humans. Cause that's what happened with me. Yeah. You know, not that all, all dogs are going to help people, but if you can understand the dog stuff and stop these dogs from fucking eating crap and going into hospitals and dying. Like I had, to, they said one of them was a Belgian Malinois puppy was eating rocks and they were like, Oh yeah. yeah. They're like, no, no, no. He's eating rocks to the point where I touch his stomach and the rocks are like clanging around in the stomach. Wow. Like you could hear him like, in the stomach. Jeez, so this is how important this fucking stuff is. It's like life or death of dogs that like, I wish the vets would talk more about that. Got like come out and be public, like make a podcast and say, look in my prep. That's let's do that. Let's bring a vet on. Let's get a vet. Yeah, I'll, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'm going to find a vet and we'll bring on the show. We have, and we'll uh, talk about that. We have our friend, uh, Monica, that deals Monica with Monica can come on. That would be good. Yeah. Let's talk to Monica and bring her on. We could do a zoom yeah. with her. Yeah, for sure. Um, and say like about how the many dogs are coming in that are eating foreign objects. Just because of so that, because you, you know why? Yet you have this whole entire community out there that's saying, inclu- <laughs> all right, I'm going to bring this all together. This is how the, my mind gets going like crazy, right? Yeah. You have this whole community of people out there who are screaming and yelling. The little, uh, the, I call them the little because they're little minded or um, small minded. Yeah, small minded. Little, little, little. <laughs> little With their little group of people, which is actually a lot oh, of people shit. who go around and they bash people and they go after it. Believe it or not, we get like none of it. Like, so knock on wood, like whatever we're doing, like for some reason we don't really get any of the hate, but I see it on other people's pages. I see other stuff that happens, right? I think that's for a reason. We're not putting hate out. Yeah, that could be that's true that's too. That's for a reason, bro. We're not putting heat out. We're, we're not, not attracting. We're not yeah. attracting. But it happens at times, you know. Yeah, but the, the, the people percentage are angry. is like people are angry yeah, and, and they have hate in their heart and they're going around. They have to release it somewhere, right? And we don't even see it to be honest. We don't but, look. And the, how funny is it that these people are like, or a lot of them are considered like we're positive only, and they're the ones that are angry, angry and hateful <laughs> yeah. and like attacking and shaming and all this oh, kind of shit. shit. Um, the irony there. So how funny is it that they're the ones promoting that this is the only way? Science proved. Blah blah blah. It's all bullshit. They're the ones saying positive reinforcement is the only thing you should be doing. Okay. How do I get my dog to stop, my puppy to stop eating rocks on the floor? And what are they going to say? Get food, read the rack, da, 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 all this bullshit. Okay, great. He takes the food and goes back and eats the rocks. What do I do? Well, you can't tell him no. So what do I do? Sit there and let him chow down on rocks or eat that cat toy and die in surgery? What do I do? What's the idea? My recommendation, pop the leash and say no. All right. And the dog says, huh? And then follow through and tell him to sit. Shh, relax. And then continue on to something else. Real quick. And it's fucking done and you save that dog's life. Real quick. You say pop the leash a lot. Yeah. Would you be able to explain like what that is? Yeah. We have to do What is that? We'll do it. I'll just do a video on it. Or I can show it. So basically what it means. Just the theory of it right now, I guess. Yeah. Like. You have have our dog there. I have my dog. So I'll show you. I think I talked about.
<laughs> I talked about this with uh, once a show with with um, when Dave was on the show. Yeah, was when I'm popping the leash. Like most people think, can you see this from? We here? can see both. Yeah. Okay, from here, perfect. Right? Yep. When I'm saying pop the leash, like the a lot of people when they hear that, they think I'm. It means like boom and like yank. Boom, Co- yes. Yeah. Boom, like that. No, this is like a pop on the leash. That was a pop. Pop. See where the dog goes. Pop. It cr- look at it, it creates like the like. Yes. That's all I want out of it. Because what is my trying to do there? The the positive people and all this. I, I actually want to like to a degree stop talking about that because it's not even worth even talking about that shit. It's not even real. It's like it's real. There's yeah. people doing that stuff. You have to address but it. I don't even want to validate it though anymore because yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You've done that already. It's like li- not even the minor leagues of like working with dogs. If someone says I only use positive, I'm like, all right, I'm not interested. I want to find someone else who has more experience, who has realized that that's like an idiotic approach to work right. with dogs. Okay. Yeah. So this thing here, the dog's going to do it. They're going to say, get the food and look at me, look at me and try to negotiate and all this kind of thing. Yeah. To me, you can't negotiate with the dog who's going to eat shit off the floor and could potentially die. Right. Like in Hoboken, the notorious uh, chicken wings on the floor. Oh my God. People, like the homeless eat these chicken wings just fling. I think they're drunk people too in Hoboken. <laughs> They just get hammered and oh, eat chicken wings, just fucking throw them in the air. <laughs> it's probably me back in the day too. Yeah. Um, we eat a lot of chicken. But wings. how do you not let, like that dog eats that chicken wing? What's your be- What's your plan? Like you don't. It's not like we have all this time. Hold on, let me get my treat bag out and start doing this and that. Yeah. And they said, well, before you have to prepare and all this. Okay. The dogs already developed the habit of doing it. What are you gonna do? Has to be not all dogs are puppies like we're talking. There about. has to be a consequence, bro. Dude. Period. So, so this and he, then there, but then they get scared because they don't understand the interpretation of what a uh, correction is. They think it's. A punishment and hurting the dog and scaring the dog and injuring the dog. No, 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 and no. Can you emphasize the the the, the slack on the leash? Yeah. So what I'm saying the here slack on the is leash because it's not constant pressure on, and then no, no, you do. No. The- I want to create this. Re- so look, if look, watch just my hand. So I'm here. If I was going to yank this dog, I would go. I would get slack on the leash, yeah. and then I would yank pressure and continue the pressure and keep yanking this fucking dog. Right. right? As opposed to what I'm trying to do is create a sensation to the dog where he's about to do something but says, what was that? That's That surprised me. And then that gives me the opportunity for him to look, did you do that? And I'm like, I did. Don't do that. Sit down and relax. Yeah. And he says, oh. And then I don't leave it like that. And I'm saying, what now, what you can do instead of that, come follow me on a walk. And I'm a lot of fun to be with. And they're like, oh. And then you positive people, pump those treats. Do all that shit then. But you got to get that no. That's what, all I'm saying. What people do is like they have a lot of pressure on the leash the whole time. Yeah. And then well, they try this is, do, they're doing this. Yeah. So they're see. constantly walking a dog like yes, this. Yes, like that. And then right? they try to do it. And then they're pulling yes. and trying to yank. That's you pulling. You can't really do much. That's not a pop. That's pulling. No, that's pulling yes. and yanking and all this. You want to have a loose leash. And then the dog's like, oh, look, Steve, your phone. I'm going to eat that. No. And he's like, huh? And then yeah. he looks to me like, did you do that? And I go, yes, <laughs> I did. And then I come into his face and then he sits down. And I go, shh. And then that's I bring so him back to the thing. Right? And then I bring him back to it because I did that one time. He goes, Do I do that? That's right. Yeah, Good yeah, boy. Yeah. I reward that. And then, and then you walk away. Positive reinforcement there. Yeah. <laughs> right, you tell me if you think that's evil, then fine. It's Bro, evil. I know a lot of people got value just from this little freaking. Um, yeah. So, okay, uh, let me just show the end of it. Like, make sure that they understand it. That, that the pop is literally, my, my hand is like this. Like, come on, bro. Get on, get on camera here, correct? <laughs> okay. On. Is loose leash and look at the yes, hand. So I'm yes, going yes. like, and then the moment that I get that pressure, that like flick of pressure, I'm releasing it. Yeah. Like, so I can even with the leash, like, this is a pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a yank. Look at how yeah. harsh that was compared. Yeah. So people say, like, look, the people who are talking about the the corrections and that stuff, they don't even know how to correct. Right. They don't even understand it. They don't even understand what the pressure is. They don't even understand why why we're doing it. How hard? So they hear you're gonna correct them. You're gonna punish him. That sounds awful. That sounds like you're going to hurt him. Why would you hurt a dog? You're going to shut him down. It's like, hold on. Check your emotions at the door. Breathe. Calm the fuck down. And let me explain this to you so you can understand it in a way. I'm too emotional. Positive breathing voice. Is it? Okay. Bye. Does anyone else want to learn? That's really what it is. I'm yeah. not interested in that stuff. You're not trying to convince anybody no, anymore. No, I don't care. I, yeah. Not that I don't care. I shouldn't say that. You I'm really, not interested really in convincing people who don't want to be convinced, who want to just yell and say, this is what it is. Based on what? You're talking to someone who's been doing this for 12 years with some of the best in the world this and what, doing it every fucking day with a pack of dogs. I know what I'm like, we know what we're talking about. This here. is why I like putting you in a classroom type of environment, which is kind of like how our podcast is set up. Yeah. Because you've never, in my opinion, you've never on camera articulated that 
mm. as well as you did just then, as far as loose being loose, loose leash, yeah. doing a pop and what it represents and all that. So that was, and by really the way, good. that's one option. Yes. That's one option of the whole thing. There's a million other ways to do that, to interrupt the dog. That's just one with the leash. That's an easy one, yep. but it has to be the right timing. So when people start talking about, this is another one. People start talking about tools. Right? Mm -hmm. What tool? Harness is this. Da -da -da, this is slip blade chokes. This uh, prong collar kills dogs. Da -da, e collar and electric. Oh, okay. Everything you just said describes somebody who doesn't know how to use any of those tools. Yep. So, where's the handler skill come into this? Because, listen, I was an athlete back in the day. I was very competitive when I played, right? And <laughs> these, when I hear, you know, Joe Schmo dog trainer, what did I call it the other day? Johnny dog trainer or whatever? With the bag and everything, I said. Oh, yeah. I said to somebody, I was like, I was like, I refuse to wear that bag thing in public. I'm yeah. not going to do that. But um, what was I saying there? Johnny Dog Trainer. <laughs> I get, I get sidetracked with the Johnny Dog Trainer. I'm forgetting what it was. Um, Johnny Dog Trainer. I forget what I'm saying now. Wow, this is where my mind goes. Kind of just saying like the the majority of what people are doing. Yeah. Whatever. Um, we'll get back to it. I'll figure it out at some point. But anyway, yeah. that's the, that's the, the 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 biggest thing that I can explain is how many how many different ways there are to interrupt a dog. Yeah. How many different ways there are to do it. But oh, the skill, the skill level. I was very competitive and all that. And you have people who are saying like, you know, selling courses, um, talking in such an authoritative way of this is the way it is, and like talking with authority. And then you watch a video of them with a leash, and and, and for me sometimes I'm like, well, you should not. You need to go back to learning. You have a lot of learning to do. Just don't stop yelling and screaming because you're not going to. Number one, this is just, just, just it tells me right away when anyone comes to somebody else's page. And these are these I see this all over. These are people who are business owners. These are people who are trainers who train people and have clients and all this stuff. And they go to other people's pages and attack. Yeah. So they tell me right away that that person is is poor at communication. Yeah. Because what's their goal? Is their goal really to get that person to change their ways? Mm -hmm. If that's their goal, that approach, you took the worst approach possible, yeah. which is you made someone defensive right away. And by the way, many, and the reason I know this, I asked the, the people who come to work with us, um, did the trainer ever make you feel like down like and shame wrong. you and make you feel wrong? They were like, yeah, that was basically half the session. Jeez. It's happening all the time, yeah. So it's a bunch of bullshit. Can I, uh, dude, I want to tell you something. Um, I just want to say, like, you know, how we say, like, we want to give people their flowers while, they're st while they are still here. Yeah. I want to tell I you. I did that one a while ago. Dude, I want to tell you that I'm, like, super grateful to be a part of this mission with you because of how much you're actually doing for the dog world. I know. It's and because, look, if I can is, finish. This is me, by the way. If this I can is me. I got I you, bro. Explain, just let me, before you no, finish no, no, that, no. finish that. But just the the uh, uh, accepting like appreciation. This I is this is that. this is your congr congratulations yeah. for saying like, dude, you're doing a really good job, and I'm I'm happy that we're doing all of this content because I know that we're making a difference. Yeah. And um, yeah. Let me just give you your flowers while you're still here, bro. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You. Yeah, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's awesome. That's one for me that I struggled with for a long time was taking some appreciation. Like I used to go to sessions and and like work magic it would be dog like 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 the guy who killed a dog and then on now the dog like walks and can walk with a pack of dogs mm -hmm. and it's like a big pity who's all you know and people that like, you change their life. holy shit like i'm like yeah but you guys did the work you did it like congratulations to you and that, so i did have a little issue because i was more insecure and didn't want to take any credit but now i've switched in my life to being able to be like i appreciate what you just said but i also don't like take that and be like, yeah, you're right. Actually, I'm the best. Actually, you know what? Fuck everybody else and all that kind of thing. And this is one that I actually learned a lot from Gary V mm -hmm. is as you start gaining confidence and feeling better about yourself, you start realizing that what you're really looking for is the, 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 the real stuff. Right. So to me, like you saying it is different because you know, the shit you're yeah. here and it's real. Right. So I take value in that. But the people who come and tell me like, I, in the same token of the people who, who say you suck, you're the worst, which is very rare that that happens or you're, you're a disgrace or you're an abuser or whatever the fuck people want to say. Um, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, because um, I know it's not true. Yeah. Then someone says you're the greatest ever. You There's no one who's even close to you and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm to a degree like same thanks, thing. but yeah. yeah, whatever. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? That's not totally true. You know, well, like I appreciate them being kind. I appreciate the kindness. Yes. Right. But I what what I'm like, it's not totally true. So I appreciate yeah. what you're saying. You're keeping it in context. It's yeah, all, it's yeah, all like, yeah. dude, I'm neutrally like, in general, not really listening to anybody's yeah. what they're saying. Well, let me let me just give you um, this other piece of it too. 
you're also somebody that's always wanting to learn. Yeah. So you pretty much come into a situation with the dogs. I know you know a lot, but you actually come in often and you say, really, I don't know shit about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, And I'm still learning. Yeah. Which is why we can sit in the car for freaking two hours listening yeah. to these podcasts. Yep. And you're still learning every single always. day. Always. So that is easier for me to give you the um, acknowledgement yeah. because you're humble by still knowing that there's still much more for right. you to learn. I, I said I said to a client the other day, they were laughing their ass off. I said, look, do you want, let me explain to you the level of learning that I want to do. If someone told me, like, hey, there's this dog trainer in Wuhan, China. Oh, my God. When, when the coronavirus started, right? When it just got released. Yeah, yeah. And they're rehabilitating dogs using only treats and positive reinforcement, aggression cases, separation, everything. They never tell a dog no. They never use leash. They didn't, they didn't do nothing aversive. Zero. And they're having world-class results and they're proving it over and over. There's videos, blah, blah, blah. I'm on the first plane out of here into Wuhan in the middle of Corona and learning that shit. Yeah. I, I you understand what I'm saying though? I'm using that as an extreme example. I honestly believe but you. But I really probably would do it. Yeah. Like they are. And this is my opportunity to see this. I need to learn this now. Yeah. But there's nobody doing it. There's nobody actually doing it. Well, I'm just witnessing you like going the, le- the distance and the length yeah. of getting freaking the information that you want. doesn't matter. If you need to go to LA, Get it doesn't it. matter. If you need to go to Europe, Get it doesn't it. matter. You're going. I'm going. And you, Let's go. But I'm watching you currently. Yeah. People don't know what you're doing at yeah. all right now yeah. as far as you're learning. No. But I'm watching you currently yeah. do all that business, stuff. Business, uh, business things, dog dog yeah. things, yeah. like every uh, he, uh, health things, psychology things, constantly on the growth thing because when – I, it was like someone like was like like stopped me in my tracks of life when I was in Vegas. That's how funny is that, right? Yeah. Vegas for Tony. And I went, but I went to Vegas for Tony Robbins Business Mastery Course, right. right? To learn about business and things like that. And I was there with Yoa from Palmolive PR. Shout out to him, doing amazing down there. He just opened up a brand new uh, uh, Caribbean Dog Psychology Center. That's awesome. So check out Palmolive PR. Is my What's buddy, up, Yoa? Good, good friend of mine. Really, really good dog guy. Um, fuck. Good guy. Oh, you got me distracted. Good guy, guy in general. Good guy. You're in Vegas. I, I started thinking about Yoa. Yeah, yeah. You're in Vegas. Huh? Yeah, we did the business mastery. And, and um, the biggest thing he said was that life is in the it, life is all about progress. Life is all about growth. That's all it is. He's toured all the con- – like not all, but a shitload of the countries, met with a billion people, whatever the numbers were, he said. And through all of that, of talking to all these people, doing seminars and everything, stuff, the one thing that I found that people are seeking is growth. Yeah. And – I said, I was like, I don't know about that when I first heard it. I'm like, eh, like, what about these billionaires and blah, blah, blah. And then sure enough, who do I start working with? Fucking billionaires. billionaires. And then under trying to be being fascinated, being like, how does this dude still want to make more money? He, I, I looked him up. His net worth is $3 billion. Damn. What the hell does he want more money for? Yeah. Because his growth is in money. That's what his thing was, right? Yeah. But he wants to grow. I would say like, hey, bro, like, I think in the finance category of growth, you've yeah. grown. You got good. Maybe we can grow in another area. Maybe you can grow in humanitarian efforts. Maybe yeah. you can grow in calmness. Which I'm Maybe sure he's doing grow. good there too. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can grow in knowledge of dog psychology. Nice. And relationship with your dog. And relationship with your wife. And relationship with your kids. Maybe that's a growth area now. Because you've achieved this. But sometimes that's, again, habits. Yeah. I'm in this habit of making money. And I don't even know how to like stop this. But and that's what I'm saying. It's growth, whether it's that, because that's the most extreme of money. Like the, mo- the reason I use the money thing a lot is because it can be measured. Right. Like I can't, you can't say like, like, let me, how, how do I measure your personal development? Me personally. You yeah. know, like how, what am I basing it off of? What, you know, you're, you would say like probably if you're taking your care income, of yourself, your shape, but yeah, how much? Your shape, like what's the said. level? What's the thing? You can't you know? measure it. Yeah. That's right. So if I'm, in good that, shape, if I'm in good shape, it's like, I can get to like really, really good shape. But then it's like, how do you measure how good of a shape yeah. can I really get? Like, how's your growth going? Yeah. Could you have grown better than that? Could yeah. you have grown more? Could right. you grow grown like, – Money so is a good one because, yeah, it's, you a, it's a number. You, you can, can measure, measure it. it. Yeah. yeah, that's something. And that's, by the way, for you business owners in there too. You got to – Sneak up. Um, that's for you business owners out there. Um, what was the line that I heard at Business Mastery? What, get, what gets measured gets accomplished. So that's something you're working with your dog too. Uh, when I'm saying, so what gets measured? So what gets measured would be, how are our sales? Mm-hmm. How are our expenses going? How is the customer feedback? Let it, uh, like all those things is in business, right? With your dog, it can be taking notes of, so yesterday I was doing this activity with him and it took me five minutes to accomplish. Today it took me four minutes and 10 seconds. You can measure that. Growth, it's measured, right? Yeah. This happened, like, so you can measure all these things that are happening with your dog of like, wow, 
Because a lot of times people won't understand that they were doing something with their dog and they're actually making progress. Yeah. And the dog's like looking confused and then they just stop because they think nothing's happening. So that's we also see knowledge. That all the time, dude. People are like, so um, common. I, we, we're still dealing with all of this stuff. And we're like, but if, we're yeah. like, you look at all the stuff that you have accomplished though. And they're like, you're right. We have, we've come a long way. Yeah. It's like, don't forget. Don't forget. Yeah. You know, you've come because when you're, cause then it, cause you're, you're seeing what the humans, what their mentality really is, right. which is a lack, more of a lack mentality, which is now my dog used to, let's just say, um, attack all dogs. Now I walk, I walk it on a loose leash down the street and it, it reacts to one out of 22 dogs. You know, he's still reacting and da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you look at it like that, yeah. but did you focus on how much fucking growth you just made with your dog? That your dog was going after 100% all 22 dogs and you just dropped it by 21 out of 22 and yeah. you only have one out of 22 now? That's growth. Now build upon that. Let's get that down to one out of every 30 dogs and one out of every 50 and then one out of a hundred and then one out of a million. And then it's none. Yep. That's the growth. You know, so focus on that shit. Focus on, on what's happening. What is there? What's the positive? Oh yeah. I said the one with the guy in the UFC who broke the leg. Yeah. He broke his leg. He was a former champion. They broke the leg. He was on his comeback fight or whatever. And he's like, I don't know. I'm in a lot of pain in the hospital, but I'm just trying to figure out what positive i can take out of this and i said that guy's a winner i said you can see why he was a ufc champion he's a winner he's got a winner's mindset he's trying to find what the, what are the positives what's the good part about all of this yeah yeah but yeah so do we want to do questions are we doing something else besides just all the shit talking we're doing honestly it was such a good podcast already for me I'm, yeah i'm i'm super if down. not then i just want to reiterate a little bit of the puppy things because uh, and, and like summarize this whole thing yeah, I'm down to do questions if you're down. Um, we're about an uh, an hour and 11 minutes in right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the bathroom, if you don't mind. Yeah. And um, we could keep it going if you're I'll down. just keep talking about the puppy thing okay, real quick. Okay, perfect. Um, well, are you going one or two? <laughs> <laughs> there's, bags on, there's bags on the side over there if you, you need one. No, no, no. Outside. Go in the woods. Uh, so, yeah, the puppy thing is like for me, for me, guys, it's like the most critical thing that we're we're doing here is after after doing this for 12 years i've realized that yes we have to deal with the animals who didn't get a fair shot who've been through a lot of shit who've had a hard time and are out of balance we have to help them as much as we possibly can but we have to stop this bleeding of the dogs and these and humans it starts with humans right the humans who don't really understand dog psychology they don't understand dogs they don't understand by the way they don't understand themselves usually the human they can use their dog for that instead of using the dog to just make them make themselves feel valued because the dog wants to see them because they've created excitement and an unhealthy attachment. You know, like that, that would be like raising a kid. Like I'm going to have a kid so I can feel valued by my kid. And by the way, people do that shit, unfortunately, but having a kid to, to be able to just, he comes like mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy all the time. And you're, Oh, I feel so good that he does that. And it's like, okay, I don't need you right now. And then you're not doing anything for the kid. You're not raising them. They're not helping them. You're not growing, but you're just using that thing to make you feel good. So ask yourself that question. I'm not saying that you watching this right now are this, but ask yourself that question and start trying to be honest with yourself. Be the one person to be brutally honest with in your life is yourself. So say, do I use my dog to find value for myself, to make me feel better, to make me feel a certain way? Do I use it? Or am I fulfilling my dog first, making sure I understand all this stuff and then having that feeling of feeling valued by the dog, but feeling valued by the dog in a healthy way because you create a great relationship that the dog just wants to be by you as opposed to creating this toxic thing of obsessive petting, obsessive excitement, obsessive um, uh, feeding and all that. So the dog becomes um, unhealthy in an unhealthy way, obsessive following. So psychologically not following, but physically follows the person around and just always wants to be by them and gets anxious when they're two feet away. That's very unhealthy for a dog. So it's super important to be able to understand that we have to stop this stuff on the beginning because you know people don't know. And that's why I'm making a big deal about it is they yeah. just don't know what they're getting themselves into. Like, which is why we don't make them feel wrong. No, I don't think you're wrong. You know? Like, look, we had a client recently who we did we did training for their their puppy Vishla and the Datsun, and you know they called like a day or two after and said like you know things are going well, but how is is this energy level ever gonna like reduce? Yeah. And <laughs> I funny. said to tell I said make sure you tell them no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, like it's you got a Vishla. Right. 
You know, this is what you got a working breed. This is what they want to do. They want to work. Like you yeah. hear, look, this morning I had Nico out for like an hour just before, like ripping the ball around. Yeah. I'm having him dig holes in the sand, by the way. Now I'm teaching That's him how awesome. to dig, dig this stuff. And then I'm hiding the ball in the sand and nice. he's digging it up and taking nice, it out. Nice. I'm firing it all over the property. That's awesome. And we started doing podcasts for what, one hour? And he's already, now he's down there. Mm, yeah, he's ready for some more. Yeah, I want to do some more in. shit. What are we doing next? And then I could be like, is this ever going to end? And yeah. uh, why is he like that? Well, you got a German shepherd, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a working breed dog. That's what this dog is going to do. So understand what dog you're getting. This is what I'm saying. We have to do the work really has to be prior to getting the dog. And then once you got the dog, like the first six months, and I highly recommend bringing a professional in. I know what you're probably thinking. If you're not in this area, you're like, but Steve, who? And I know that's the biggest issue we're having right now. But my goal is to eventually put these ranches all over the freaking country and hopefully all over the globe. That's the goal. Yeah. So right now it's a tough one, but you can message and say, Hey, I live here. Do you know anybody? Another thing too, that I'm going to be doing, like once we start traveling, we can start traveling again and all that is doing like the traveling to locations. Like, Hey guys, we're going to be coming to San Francisco for the next week. Schedule your sessions. You know, we do sessions there Um, or workshop or group class or whatever the hell. Hey guys, we'll be in Florida. Hey, we'll be in wherever, Texas and, and Minnesota, wherever the fuck we go. Like, if we get enough people to do them in those areas, not if we get them, we're going to get them. We just have to, we just have to like plan that out and do that. So I I can help with that. But look, there's going to be certain cases like, well, what do I do about my puppy and all that? That's why we're working as hard as we can here. That's why it's nonstop every day. We're trying to get this business here self-sustainable so that we can go on the road. Yeah. We talked Uh, about that yesterday. It's, it's really, um, we're, we're, we're mastering the model here. So it's a lot happening there's a lot of growth happening there's a lot of things and and problems that come with growth there's good problems which is like all right we have a dog park we have a nature dog park and turf dog park okay what's the problem with that well cost a lot of damn money and another thing that was a problem with it is that sticks and branches and things (laughs) fall into it and we have to clean it up every day so that's another little bit of a thing right oh shit i left a pile of sticks out there actually i was picking up i saw it when i was doing it with nico with the, the the lore thing yeah um yeah, but that's that, that they come with problems, but we're doing it as fast as we possibly can to get yeah. to everybody. And it's my dream. And we're dedicating our life to this, to really mm-hmm. um, helping dogs globally. And, you know, everyone's doing it in different ways. Rescues are doing it in their way. Vets are doing it in their way. Like a lot of dog trainers are doing it their way. Um, you know, a lot of people are trying to help animals in, in many ways, which is awesome. Um, we're doing it in our way. And mine is to just give you guys information so you understand what to do with a dog. Because yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Like, Yes, I'm trying to make money so we can fund things like this and we can create more opportunities for people and people can have a better chance of having a great relationship with their dog. But it's not really about the money, you know? It's not it's it, we that's needed to facilitate this whole thing, to facilitate the whole mission here, right? So that's what we're doing. We have to make money here and figure it out. But one thing that I I really don't want to ever do is like commoditize. I mean, I'm sorry. Information to me is a commodity, so I don't want to sell you info. Yeah. I really don't. No. What I want to sell is, or what I have to charge for is like when access, yeah, someone wants to come here and work with me one-on-one. Someone wants to, after this video, after this, they want to do a one hour video call with me to work specifically with a dog. I have to get monetized. I have to monetize that some way so I can afford to do that more often. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's like the real reason why things are, you know, and sometimes we had the one recently where someone was like asking about the price. So it's like someone who's desperate has been through the positive trainers, been through this and is still like. Like has no other option and is still like, I don't know about this price. So something I always say to people when it comes to that is I say, well, you, you've already understood the cost of not doing this from the beginning. Right. That's actually true. Yeah. You know, so it costs you that many trainers, that many sessions, that much time, that much money. Right. Yep. And now you're here. So when are you going to learn your lesson? (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Like you didn't do it in puppyhood for training. You didn't do the enrichment. You didn't do this. So when are you going to learn it? Because now you're not going to do this. So what's going to happen? Let's just say it's a, a, a two, three, four-year-old dog. Four-year-old dog. Dog may be alive for 10 more years, right? Yeah. What's it going to cost you in the next 10 years to be dealing with those issues for the next 10 years? Because by the way, they're probably going to get worse. For real, yeah. People don't think about that either. So take that payment that and, cost. And, and put it over 10 years if you, that's where you want to look at it, you know? Yep. It's like learn, and you're not, not only are you learning how to be with your dog, you're learning a skill where in, in an environment where millions of people have dogs. There's millions of dogs in America. It's probably smart for you to understand how to be around that animal. Yeah. Like I, I know how to be around a cat. I know how to be around one. I don't know how to influence a cat totally, mm-hmm. but I know how to be by one. I'm not just going to walk up and start petting a cat. 
It's like a nervous dog. <laughs> it's really cool. Actually, I've been dealing with like but, friends but cat, that have it's cats, animals. and it's amazing. It's to, animals. To yeah. And in America, for us in America, it's the cat and the dog are the most primary one that are in the homes, right? So if I lived in an area where um, geese were everywhere, I would I would probably want to learn about geese. Mm-hmm. We moved up here. There's bear up here. So what did I do? I started fucking reading all about bears. What do they do? What do, if I get presented with one in the woods, what do I do? Yeah. What's the plan? Do I need what do I need to have? Learning about How psychology in general, yeah. of all animals, including humans uh, of ourselves. Yeah. Learning the psychology behind it is really cool. Or I could just be like people, like a lot of people do, and say, fuck that. I don't want to learn that. That dog should just figure it out. That bear should just figure it out. Okay, so the bear figured it out and killed me. Now yeah. what? The dog figured it out and bit you. Now what? Yeah, but what's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him. Start looking in the mirror and understand you didn't understand that species psychology. You're too stuck in your human world looking at your phone all day long in your echo chamber and you've lost any sense of instincts and any sense of understanding of energy and how to be with an animal. That's why it's happening. Yeah. So I'm trying to get people to get into this puppy thing and like, ah, oh, God, it's a lot of work and all. I know it is. But you know what's more work? Not doing it. Yeah, exactly. You know what, dude? Let's, let's check out a cool puppy here. What? Let's just check out this cool pup that we got going. Oh, yeah. Enzo. Let's so this, this is a three-month-old Alaskan Malamute who uh, just got dropped off uh, two days ago. I think two, day, two, three days ago. Two days ago, I bet. I for believe. our puppy enrichment program. So I did a video call with them, and they had, you know, the puppy, they had just got the puppy. This is, listen, Malamutes are no joke. It's yeah. a big, powerful dog, and, yeah. and this is the, they live in New York City. And this is their fur. This is really their first dog. Mm-hmm. Like the, I think the, the 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 female had one, like foofy dog. I think, and the guy. This is his first dog. So these are the ones that people saw the pool and they said, "I'm going to the deep end and I'm jumping in." Yeah, for real. But luckily, they're smart enough, or they realized enough, to say we need help with this damn thing. Right. Because I need a lifeguard to show us how to swim if I'm going to be jumping in the deep end. So that's mm-hmm. our job here. And now there are kids in camp with us learning how to swim the right yeah. way. And then now we're going to show them how they can continue the process of creating the Michael Phelps swimmer. Right. You know what I mean? All That's really analogies. what it is. All the analogies. Bro. And then, yeah, right? It's perfect, yeah. It's like so that, that – and so he's here. Yeah, look at this guy. Oh, this looks really good, yeah. Look at that. Actually, like a nice good. slate. Yeah. Nice blank was... thing. Look at this guy. <laughs> Curious, <laughs> feeling good about life. Look at this thing. I can mute that. This is what I'm saying about the relationship up when I told you guys, right? That when the dogs come in, I want to know all the dogs. Like the cheers. Everybody knows your name thing. By the I way, love that shit. By the way, so you said that. Yeah. I'm going to make that into a clip on we its own. Because you, you said it in our, in, our, in our video, but I'm going to go cut to you the just have cheers to do, clip. Dude, just do like Everybody knows By the way, name. here, you guys are in the middle of a, of a social media meeting with yeah, us. Yeah, always. Is do it when, we're, we're, when we have all the dogs in the dog park. And they're like coming in like one by one. And it's like they're then they're running around. And it's like sometimes you wanna go. Yeah. Where everybody. Where so everybody. Is it how it goes? Yeah. Where everybody, everybody knows, knows your, your name. name. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And they're always glad you came. Yeah, that's perfect. You wanna be where? I don't know what the words are. I don't so know I could do almost like not a freeze frame, but I could do like the, their names basically yeah. right there on those moments. Yeah, it'd be good. That's awesome. We'll do that. That'd be really good. But yeah, anyway, this is like all the dogs who come in. It's it's super important for me that the dogs are. Uh, feel the relationship feel relationship so look at the this is okay if you came this far you deserve some gold info nice right? an hour and a half think about in. this from the perspective of the puppy right so what would this puppy normally doing in new york city right overwhelmed as fuck so the owners don't really understand right they don't know not that their fault they're new to dogs so they're going to bring the dog out in new york city which is going to be a fiasco of a place to go it's chaos you've been there right even sure. now in the middle of corona it's still chaotic and yeah, shit it is. there right yeah so they're going to bring him out. The dogs have no clue what's going on. Be overwhelmed. See all these things going on. S- uh, so many distractions. Eating shit off the floor. The humans are going to try to figure this out and navigate it. All the people in the city, I shouldn't say all, but most of the people in the city are going to go, oh my God, is that a husky? Is that a Malamute? Is he a puppy? Is he, oh my God, and all this shit, right? So then this puppy starts learning right away. Strangers equal excitement. Strangers equal invade space. Strangers equal, I need to start getting revved up in front of these people, right? And he starts pulling towards dogs and lunging towards dogs to try to jump on dogs. And then an adult dog snaps at him because dogs in the streets aren't always the most balanced, right? So now how's his beginning of his life going? A little chaotic, a little yeah. all over the place, a little like unsure. And then he starts realizing these humans don't really know what the hell they're doing. So I guess I should be starting to figure out that I'm going to be in control of all this shit. Which, by the way, in the first month he did. He started already doing some resource guarding mm-hmm. with them. And was being very mouthy with them. So it tells me right away he's not showing respect and they don't know how to get it yet. Right? Mm-hmm. 
But luckily, he came right here. Now his life just changed in the, in, in the blink of an eye, right? He comes in here, and he comes out of the thing, hands, and he's looking at all these strangers here, which is me and Adam and Cassie and Jamie and Jay and De all the people working here, right? We're all here. And he's going to meet all these strangers, and he walks up and says, oh, they don't do this whole thing. And he doesn't even do that because he's never really even been outside yet. Right. So he doesn't even have this thing, which is so awesome. It is. So yeah. now he's learning that when people are around, people are just around. Mm -hmm. So when I see Dave, like out there working with him in the beginning, I came outside and what did I do? I let Enzo come walking up to me. He calmly walked up, started smelling my feet and started smelling my leg, looked up at me and then kind of just walked away. And I was like, no problem, bro. Mm -hmm. Normal. Because imagine that's what your dog did when a, when a guest came over. And you told them, this is, this is good. You're allowed to do this. We like this person coming in. And they come up and smelled, and they said, oh, you're here. Cool. I'm going to go inside and get my bone. And da, da, da. How amazing would that be for most people, right? Yep. So we're teaching them that. So now this dog is meeting strangers here at the ranch when they're here, but everyone doing it the right way. So having amazing experiences with everybody that, that he meets. And not to mention, anyone who's handling him is providing leadership. So all he's going to know is follower state. Now, the biggest key in this whole entire thing, teaching the humans – how to, f how to follow through with this thing. This dog lives with us. Amazing dog. He's going to be live the best life ever. You Definitely. know what I mean? He'll be, he'll be amazing. Super balanced. It's just what we are able to do. We have everything we need here. Yeah. We have the people. We have dogs. We have a dog park. We have nature. We have, we have everything we need. I mean, can we enhance it more with the pool? Yep, coming. Can we enhance it more with agility park? Yep, coming. Can we enhance it more with uh, farm animals? Yep, coming. You know, like a huge trail throughout the property, buying more properties? Yeah, but that's... But well, already what we have here is already enough for Funny. a dog to be raised. The, the, uh, and Nico's proof. Yeah. The he pool, came in when we just started. Yes. And, and, he's, and he's been raised. The, the pool is probably, in my opinion, one of the final tools Huge. that you will need. Um, and once you get that, that's like the last tool. Really, Huge. That we, that's super, super needed. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. So, so that's good. his thing. So now, he, now Enzo's experience now for the next month or whatever how long he's here. I'm not even sure how long. Is to follow all humans. There's rules, boundaries, limitations in place that are super fair. Obvious consequences, good and bad for his decision making. Um, he gets to meet people in a calm way. He gets to eat food calmly. He gets to learn place. He gets to learn how to walk on leash. His socialization now with dogs is in a calm way. He's getting able to walk in a pack with dogs. He's learning about leash pressure. He's learning how can I play with dogs in a dog park without all the bullshit before. Without he's already attacked a dog in a dog yeah. park. Without he's already bitten 17 people, you know, without he's already been reacting to dogs on leash for three years. So, again, guys, this is a, this this podcast alone is, a, is is more on the puppy thing for people thinking about getting a puppy, have one um, in the future, want one. It's really about that. Um, we'll do we, we've done a ton on the intervention stuff. Yep. So I'm not leaving you guys hanging on that stuff. We're yep. always going to help you with the, the dogs are out of balance. I'm just trying to make the point of how this dog's life is going to start off. So much more optimally than him just wandering around uh, New York City, like pulling on leash, going to some daycare box where he doesn't learn anything but to piss and shit indoors and get crazy with other dogs and want to get avoidance. And then the other dogs don't let him even rest there because they, they're so excited planning to play and he wants to rest. He's a puppy. He wants to lay down and rest. Yeah. You have to let him rest. So we don't even realize that with a puppy, that we're, we're sending him to an environment where we're saying, you need to stay awake for eight straight hours. And be excited the whole time. And the puppy's like, holy shit. And then the puppy comes home tired. And the people are like, this is the best place ever. Look at how tired he is. Right. Yeah, because they just kept him awake and kept him aroused the whole time. And yep. so he learned to live in that default state of arousal. And then now he got exhausted physical body because the body never got the chance to actually rest and recover. So he sleeps. Then he wakes up, recharges the physical body. And now that, that mind is, cra is craving that level of excitement for eight straight hours. Yeah. And then, then here comes a snowball, worse and worse and worse. And then here come the anxiety cases that come flooding through this place over and over and over again. I mean, the dog we had the other day, they said, you know, well, this did all start happening right when we started bringing him to daycare. The barking, the lunging, the, the not, it was all right when we started bringing him to daycare. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that it's daycare's fault, but knowing the daycares that I've seen, it probably is their fault. High probability. High probability it's their fault. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if we want to really talk about fault, it's technically the responsibility of the owners to realize this stuff and understand it. But at the same time, I understand this information isn't really out there just yeah. yet. So it's, it's our job to educate and not shame and make people wrong. So this is for all you guys. You're in my pack, right? If you're watching this shit, you're in my pack. You're in the pack where it's our pack. Yeah. I shouldn't say my, it's our pack, right? 
I don't want you guys out there going out and trying to like point in people's faces and tell them you should be doing this. You should, you should, should. So what is this something that I always tell the trainers, right? I, I, when I go watch my trainers do a session, I, I shadow them and I'm there in the session. I have to tell the people sometimes, nope, I'm not answering your questions. This is for, <laughs> for this yeah. person, not me. But when I'm in there, I assess how, yes, the dog stuff and I'm giving them that stuff, but I'm always saying you can never make this person wrong. Yeah. Once you start making them wrong, they're going to start being defensive and you're going to lose the ability to influence them and get them to do what you need them to do with a dog. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that this information is not there and say, yes, technically you should have known these things, but however you don't because the information is not there. So my job is to educate you and let you see it. Then once you see it, if you choose to say, well, fuck that, I don't want to do it. Now it's your fault. Then I'll shame your ass for that too. I don't care. Yeah. Cause you know better because yeah, because yeah. you're, you're, you're consciously making the decision of, I don't care. I'm going to let my dog suffer. I don't care as long as it makes me feel good. Yeah. To me, you're an asshole if you do that. Right. You know, and you're in, you may be an asshole in that moment. Doesn't mean you have to be an asshole the rest of your life. Yeah. Cause I was an asshole for about 10 years. <laughs> I was an asshole kid at times too. My, parents, my dad would be very happy to say that in one of the five. And it still comes through every now and then. Look at that shit. Like I see that and what that looks like to me right there is someone handed me, I'm an artist and yeah. someone handed me a, a blank canvas that has like a little bit of like stuff on it because they've had it for a month. Oh yeah. You were saying that right before the podcast started, you were saying that when, uh, when they don't do the prevention stuff first, yeah. That, you oh, have, yeah. that you have to prep and clean the analogy. canvas. Okay. Yep. So that's the one. This dude right here is a busy, let's just say he was eight, eight, uh, eight weeks, right? He's basically like a blank canvas. Okay. He's basically like, hasn't been influenced behaviorally aside from his first, you know, two months with mom and shit, hopefully. So this is one, what, 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 what painting do you want to draw? Do you want to, do you want to draw a masterpiece or do you want to just throw shit at the, at the thing? So then what happens is people throw shit at all over the thing. They try to create a masterpiece, but they're taking, you know, like this, this paint, blue paint and just, I don't know. That, let's try uh, that didn't work let's try that and all of a sudden it's a sloppy mess and then someone's coming to me saying hey so this is what i've done so far and it's like looks like a ch uh, a child scribbled on all over the damn thing and like i'm looking to make this the next mona lisa that's what people say i want my dog off leash yeah okay do you know what that's gonna take <laughs> a long damn time a shitload of effort a shitload of time and it's gonna cost you because now you need a lot of professional help to get you to that point my dude here we can get him right from the beginning right now. Yeah. It's going to be not that it's not going to be as expensive. It's not going to take that much time because we're not taking all that time to redo the old shit. So I'm not saying that if Enzo like came to us at eight months old out of imprint that we couldn't help him. Of yeah. course we could, but we have to now remove all this crap and all these bad behaviors, all this, all these patterns and habits and associations that have been created to spend all that time destroying that stuff while then showing them the new stuff. Yeah. That could have been just done from the beginning. That's all I can say about it. And people say like, Nico, holy cow. Yeah, I know. I invested the time. Yep. I, I know the stuff and I invested the time with him. So that's what he's going to turn out like off leash and just want. It's like literally to, to the, the, I can't, let me explain it to you guys what it's like to have the loyalty thing with the dog to be able to be me in the kitchen cooking and leave Nico out in the yard. There's a driveway here. There's all this stuff going on. I'm not recommending any of you do this, right? This is me to be like, where is that dog? By the way. And then I go outside and I see him in the, laying in the sand, just rolling around, really? having a good time. Yeah. And then I go, I go, what are you doing out there? And he's wagging his tail, having a good time. And then he comes running up to the door and I invite him in. And That's he crazy. comes in, I pretend to his place and lays down. It is just a, 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 just a pure level of communication that yeah. happens there. And you're so connected. You're, you're in agreement with the dog. Like the dog agrees with your leadership. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing feeling to have. It really but is. It takes work. Oh yeah. It takes a lot of effort and it, I shouldn't say a lot. Like it, it takes a lot, a, a tremendous amount of effort if you've done it the incorrect way. Um, but it takes less, less effort. It still takes effort from poppy hood. It's just less effort in my opinion. Right. That's it. And Nico, so, Nico is your dog, but you, you molded him to a point where somebody else could come in yeah. because of the leadership that you gave him. Yeah. He's handled and, by everybody. And he's able to do well with others. Like with me, he, yeah. he's, we're connected too. like, because I follow your direction. Yeah, you I saw the other day I was doing something on media in the house and Adam's in the fucking back out here biking around like the woods and shit with this dog. And he's off leash following him around. Yeah. Connected. He understands. Connected with me. It was awesome. So all it so is, I is, agree with that feeling that you were just saying. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a surreal feeling when the, when the animal is, feels like he's a part of you yeah. essentially. That's what yeah. it feels like. That's what it used to feel like. So I, that, I, I try to share that with people when I used to walk my pack in Hoboken. I'd have 10 to 15 of them, right? I would have them all together. What it felt like people say, like, how do you control all that? Because they're thinking it of, of, of 15 individual energies, right. like all over the place. 
But when you, you like harness that power as the leader, that calmness, which is such a powerful energy and you bring that confidence to it and you walk it, it, the dogs cannot help but joining into that energy. And you feel like you're one big ball of like good energy mm-hmm. walking down and you're in like total like connection. Yeah. Like you just like plug the dogs in. Whoop, whoop. Like the leash is like, I just plug them in. Like what, so you're into the what movies computer. like that? Do you remember Matrix, that? Yeah. Um, no, no, not, not the Matrix, the but it's similar. Plug in, yeah. But it's similar to Which it. Which one? Freaking Avatar, dude. Yeah. You remember that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They plugged into the horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. awesome. That's like that stuff. So now you guys are plugged in to the leadership thing and you're feeling good and I'm here to like guide you through this crazy area. And they're like, I don't know. I trust and respect this guy. Yeah. And I can feel the love from him. So yep. here's your loyalty, bro. I'll follow you wherever you want. That's why we love dogs so much, dude. So imagine what that what what business owners can learn from this. What right. parents can learn from this. What teachers can business learn from this. Business owners with their employees, parents with their kids, teachers with their students, uh, uh, police officers with the people they pull over. Right, Steve, you're so fast, but like I like to be able to like you said that one thing, but then I took it the next level, which yeah. is like explain why yeah. why the parents, you know, teachers and all. Yeah, yeah, it's it's freaking awesome. Yeah, it can go to anywhere in life. Yeah, so how do we take care of your customers better? Yeah. You care about them? Do they trust and respect you? Do they love you? Do they see you as an expert? No. Well, then forget it. They don't, you know, you got to do better. Yep. But this is not fair. Life's not fair. I don't know what to tell you. I, look, I'm going to start doing a little bit more of this stuff because this is the tough love to a degree that I received over the years that transformed me. Yeah. The pussy shit doesn't transform people. I don't care what anyone says. Like, like meaning when I say that, that's my New Jersey, you know, New York, that way of saying it. But that's like the... The, um, the, the sissy soft, stuff, soft the, the like, poor you, you're, you're, it's okay. And like, yeah, you did your best and da, da, da. did you really do your best? Yeah. The PC way. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, like it doesn't work. It, it just doesn't really get results. It, it actually does. It actually you does to, work, but what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to get somebody to grow? Or are you trying to make them just feel like this false illusion sense of like fake right, happiness right, right. right now that they're so that, yeah, I'll give you a little taste of this, this fake. Yeah. You're doing great. Okay. Good. And then when you're, when you're honest with yourself, like, I don't really feel that great. Yeah. I don't, I'm definitely not doing that good of a job. It's like, yeah, you could be doing a lot better. Wow. I don't like the way that feels. I know I'm being direct with you, which no one in your life has been so far. And I'm here to help you with that shit. Cause no one did it for me. Really. My father did it decently. I'll give him that. He like in certain, when it came to sports, he was good with that shit. Yeah. Not this. Well, this is what you lost. What do you want me to tell you? This, right, is, right. this is part of the game. This right. is what happens in life. So that was a great thing that he taught me. Um, but about other certain other things, it wasn't it wasn't as direct. But yeah, then, yeah. then and then you have the side of like my mom there who would who would it's of course she's going to be in the nurturing thing. And then she was at home, and I was more with her throughout the day when my father was working and all that shit. So yep. it was it was like what she did an amazing job of of like was building my confidence in a way of like you can do anything you want, mm-hmm. da, 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 this and that. But and your dad kept you humble. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. So there was a lot of like that stuff. Now you can go the opposite way too. It's like, I wish they would have taught me more about finances or, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of but course, like, yeah. you know, uh, again, with that stuff, it's, it's having empathy Yeah. or compassion, you know? Well, what about their parents? Did their parents teach them that stuff? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then how the hell are they going to teach that shit? You know? Right. And they really did. I shouldn't even say that like that. Like they were like, my father was a business guy. So he was like involved in these things. And I, I, I got to, so here's a, actually a great lesson, right? Instead of it being that um, my dad sat down and said, okay, so this is how you do business, right? This is how you make a business. This is how you do this shit. Instead, he did it and I watched it and right. I saw it. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying about the imprint. It's, and and for, for you who have children who are in the zero to seven years, you got seven years in imprint, right? And people say, well, okay, the windows are, what do I need to teach them? What do I want to do? Well, first of all, remove that anxiety because that's what they're going to pick up on. Yeah. They're studying and watching, okay? They're not... They're, they're not learning, this is how you uh, invest this much money into cryptocurrency, right? Mm-hmm. They might see you doing crypto. Daddy, what are you doing? Oh, this is called crypto. Like, that's a thing like that, right? Mm-hmm. But what they're really learning is how do you, they're, how do you behave? That's what they're really watching. Right. What does this guy do? He gets up in the morning and goes to work every day. Hmm. Interesting. When mommy says this, daddy freaks out, right? Yeah. When dad does this, mom g- g- goes nuts, you know? When I do this... Um, my whatever screams and yell like so they're that's what they're gonna start picking up on and then sure enough they they grow up and do a lot of the same stuff so yeah. it's not that it's so much of what you're teaching them you are teaching but not by the words of saying they're they're, they're studying the action and absorbing it which is just what a dog is doing yeah. when you get it they're studying you right from the beginning and you don't know it yeah. so I study them when I see a dog right away 
This is the one that, like, Caesar was one of the biggest things. He said, you, the moment that you see a dog in public zone, you're already assessing and evaluating. And it's constant. Because when you start walking forward and you hit social, which you're getting closer now, and that dog starts going from this to that, things just changed. So what are you going to do about that? You need to know what you have to do about that. Yeah. You know? Do you take a step back? Take a foot? So you're studying from a distance. So that's what a dog is doing when they come and they say, who is this human who's coming into the picture? And you go on the floor and say, oh, come on in, puppy. And you start holding it and putting it in your bag and all this. They say, all right, so this is not a leader. Got it. This person definitely is associated with excitement. It definitely it doesn't respect their space. So she's weak, you know, or he's this or he's or he's he's definitely a harsh guy. Holy shit. Like, no, right away. And the dog's like, fuck, I don't trust you. I'm out of here. You know, so those are the things that are so goddamn important. They're studying who you are. That's what I'm saying. It was easier said the human behind the dog. It's so damn true. It's so true. But nobody wants the dog training world ain't talking about it. I, I, I'm going to the best of the best. and I listen to their shit. Not many are talking about human energy. How do you feel? How do you feel right now? You ask the clients that often. How often did I say, how often did I say that to, to Rooney's owners yesterday? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling? How are you feeling now? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. I feel good about it. I'm a little unsure about what I'm going to, yeah. How are you feeling? Because if you're feeling unsure, that dog's going to feel unsure. Mm-hmm. You know, or the dog's going to feel, you don't know what you're doing, so we'll take leadership yeah. in that moment. So that's why I'm asking, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Because what if that, into, okay, let's just say yesterday we did two hours of going in the elevator and then all this stuff. And I never asked her how I feel and she felt anxious the whole time. Right. The training that we're doing is useless. It's pointless. She has to understand that she's, that she's feeling anxious and we have to work on that as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. one day, well, I'll, I'll keep saying it over and over yeah. and eventually they're going to figure it out. People will say like, wow, it is me. Yeah, I know humans. We've been sold this thing that we're this like, by far the best, you know what I mean? And we're just entitled to be able to, we're, we're, we just deserve to be able to just walk up to any animal and pet it and treat it like whatever we want, like a stuff. Be- Fuck you. No, you're not. You're not allowed to do that. That's what na- not nature's law says. No, you cannot do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Nature's law says, if you do that, there you are at risk of getting injured. And that's a consequence for not understanding energy, instincts, dogs, psychology, animals, energy, all that shit. Okay. That was my little rant for today. Good rant. Yeah. So that's it. And then this is that you want this damn thing when he's a little guy, young dude, and he's saying, what, can you show me how to be on this earth? Are you going to teach me like my mom did? Or are you just going to fucking leave me to figure it out on my own and deal with New York City on my own? Right. And make me lead you humans in your human environment, in your city, under with your anxiety, with your anger, with your depression, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With you feeling sorry for yourself, with you being a victim, I got to deal with all that shit? Fuck. And you're blaming me, dog? <laughs> and so it's like, ah, I'm not saying this is, the, this is not the owners, their owners, but I'm just right. saying in general of all the people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So put yourself in the dog's paws. Nice. Instead of shoes. You know, for him, what is he getting at? Now he's in a ranch for the next weeks. He's got people who care about him, who are going to fulfill him, who are going to show him the right way, who are putting him first before their emotional needs. It's like, no. You, I'm going to raise you, bro. I got your back. I'm going to be the best parent. You're going to remember me for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, a, that's, what, that's what I want to be when I'm a parent, when I have kids. I want them to be like, damn, dad was, he held us accountable. Yeah, he yeah. made us be aware and he was like. And he was fair. He was fair about it, but, but damn, then he told us the truth. Even then when it wasn't like, even when it wasn't most convenient. Yeah. Even when, when it wasn't going to be a time to, that was going to be the easy route to do it. He still told us the truth. And, it, and, and in the moment, it was hard to hear it sometimes. This is what I'm doing for you guys. I really hope that I'm doing it. It's hard to hear it sometimes. And that's why I do those posts about the affection and stuff. But guys, I get it. I know it's a, stop petting the fucking dog all the time. It's not good for him. Oh, God, Steve, you do keep it real for us. I know I have to because, because I get the people who do it for me. And that's what worked for me. Yeah. So I'm trying to do the same for you, and I'm doing it for these guys too. Who, who kept the Who kept it real for you? Caesar, for sure, in the beginning. Um, the my father, um, Marshall, for sure. Nice. Um, Tony Robbins keeps it real for sure. Um, Dan Pena keeps it real for fucking yeah. real sure. Um, and listen, yeah. if you don't like any of these people, it's okay. It's just that yeah, it's like you learn from who you learn from. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you yeah. got a lot of good information. Yeah, good it's, from it's one of the, it's the thing where where. You know, like people say, like, they think it's like this thing. Like, this is, again, this all or nothing mentality. It's like, if you watch whoever, let's just say, let's pick Caesar. If you watch Caesar, they like, if you are watching it, they're like, oh, you agree with him and everything he does. It's like, 
you don't have to agree with every you're watching it to see if there's anything about it you can pick up and learn yeah is there anything good about this that i can understand and learn and get better with you know what i mean so again think about it like i don't want to make uh, the last thing i do with politics but it's the best example because it's so hot of a topic right now of like you're either left or right yeah okay that's it but i'm neither then what you know what what am i here there i have views on from both sides so am i crazy no i think i'm probably one of the most rational ones who says, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, Trump. Ah, uh, Biden, this thing that you're saying, yeah, there are some things there. I te- Look, what, what, well, that's not the cat of the bed. I tend to lean more towards this side of things, right? But that's because mostly about economics. And <laughs> I like how you didn't say which side it was. Huh? I like how you didn't say which side it was. You're just like, yeah, I, I, I lean to, with the conservative to this side. Views. Like, there's yeah. definitely, I, I lean towards certain things of that. But I also have a ton of beliefs in the, in the, the more democratic view of things, too. There right. are both. I have both. Yeah. So if we can actually have these conversations, as I'm saying about intellectual conversations, this brings it back to when someone comes on on a page and just talks shit and whatever, I value my time a lot. So if someone wants to just yell and scream like a child, I'm not interested in having a conversation. If someone wants to tell me about something about, hey, Steve, that view on that that you like on the conservative side, have you ever thought about this? And I'm like, no, I didn't. But that's a very interesting scenario that you're talking about. And I'm willing to, to not get emotional about it and my, my, uh, what's it like your, my, my, my ego or my thing is not, is not related to my political view. Right. So if you, you know what I mean? So it's not like if you say, I don't agree with that thing, that's fine. I, I that you, you don't have to. Yeah. That's what, that's what makes this country great. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the whole thing's supposed to be about. So we got to like remove, this is my last thing. In the pol- We got to remove this. Like we're over here, whether it's the dog world, whether it's politics, whether it's like about parenting or te- or education system or finances, we got to stop this like being over here thing. Yeah. I'm either here or here. The two extremes. Let's go in here and start actually chatting. And yeah. Talking. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And let's get out of money, power, fame world and start going to calm, confident, love, joy world. Yeah. That's the Caesar shit right yep. there. Before we get out of here, do you know what uh, episode number this is? I'll take a guess. 20. Oh, damn. I'm off already? Yeah. If you're in the 30s? 30? 30, 30? Yes. Wow. I was going to say like 27 or 28. No, bro. We, we, we flew through those last ones. Um, but dude, I'm proud of us. 30, 30 episodes in. This is always been one week because of the blizzard. Yeah. 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 But it it, it has been over the last few years. You actually initially hired me on to do Do your podcast. podcast, Right. And then it turned to social media. Yeah. It turned into like a whole monster, which is awesome. Yeah. This still is. But now that we're finally doing this like more consistently, like I'm proud of We got to 30. Um, Keep it going. The, yeah, the podcasts are getting better, in my opinion. And honestly, you know if we don't if we don't have the viewership right now, it's all good because this is great care. practice for us. Yeah, it's like and it's gonna and like the, the thing that I think about is like, yeah, we're just starting this shit. Exactly. So when I first started walking dogs, no one who knew who the fuck I was either. Thirty is almost like three. We yeah. just did three podcasts. Here's the perfect example. When I first started walking dogs, no one had a clue who I was yeah. about dogs anywhere in the globe. Right? We went to Hoboken yesterday. How many people were saying we're like, that dude, that dude? Guy? It was like so, being like like a dude, bizarre. It tripped me out. One guy, we were inside of a. Uh, um, an oh. apartment complex, and he was like, "Oh, guys, I'm really big fans. My girlfriend's right upstairs. I'm gonna let her know that you're in our building." She's gonna freak out knowing you're in the that, building. That tripped me out. And I'm like, "What? Okay." Every time we That's hear, cool. every time I hear that from people, it trips me out. Yeah, and yeah, then I get a message from it. him on Instagram. This is yep. our account. So we we need help with our eight month old. Yep. Here's the shop. We're well, happy to help you. Yeah, it's awesome. Super so awesome. that's what I'm saying is like even on YouTube where we're, we have like, we may not get millions of views or not or someday maybe yeah. and not because I want to f- pump my ego and look at how many viewers we have no I just want this information out there so people can know and, and to be honest all of our view all of our followers are real followers yeah that's the other part that I'm, I'm proud about that too because I'm not gonna like like look everyone's gonna be thinking when's this guy gonna monetize us when's he gonna like try to like they're waiting for it, sell yeah. us like this bullshit course or when's he gonna it's not gonna happen you know yeah, get, like sell us some piece of crap fucking thing that just to make money on or it's just never gonna happen yeah you know the only thing that I would ever sell you guys is things that you're asking for and the leash I got it uh, yeah. okay I know for the last <laughs> two years three years we've been saying yeah we're coming with the mm-hmm. leash we're coming with the leash but this is this is. Don't get frustrated. This is me, Mass. I want to give you a great product. Yeah. So we're working on. It. I'm working with manufacturers. I'm working, and I, and I never knew the, the 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 big rope issue of the world that was going on. Apparently, but to get good rope, and then you we actually have to do that very hard, soon because we don't want our materials to get more expensive either. Yeah, I know. Right. And 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 like, how many pieces of hardware go, and yeah. where do you get the hardware? And like, oh my god, it's a whole thing of how to do this, but. I could have just got a slip lead and sold it and made a good amount of money, but I don't want to do that shit. I'm not doing that to you guys. Cause I've been, how, how annoying is it when you go on and it's like, Oh hell yeah, we got to go back. Well, hold on. 
how annoying is it when you go and you're like, I want to learn about this dog thing. And someone says, great, check out this webinar and I'll show you it all. Right. I'll show you how to learn about dogs. And it's like a 60 minute promotion of them to go, then go buy their, their e-course and you yeah. spend the, the third, the 27, 37, 97, 197, 297, 497. That's always the sevens, right? Yeah. And the reason people do that is marketing shit. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, or psychology, sales, sales, psychology, yeah. sales. And then you watch it and you're like, all right. Yeah. That was like pretty good, I guess. But yeah, I got some things and, uh, I'm never doing that shit. I'd rather give it away for free than, than, than do that. You know? Cause then it's like, I think the stuff that we give, we could charge for a lot of it, yeah. but I don't want to do that because I care too much about everybody and I care too much about my, maybe I'm being a little selfish, but I care about our legacy. Mm-hmm. I care about uh, leaving a, um, a positive influence on this world. And if that's what it takes, then we're going to do it that way. And doing good because in my opinion, doing good doesn't really cost anything. Yeah. Right. So what we're doing, yes, it caught, we're it actually caught, coming it, out of pocket it money. Yeah, yeah. It does cost money, but yeah, we're coming out of pocket, but it doesn't cost anything to be a good person and put right. that out there and right. give, give shit away for free. Cause to me, like yeah. be like animals getting better, humans being happier, me, us personally feeling uh, happy, living with purpose, accomplish, understanding the, like I always say the ups and downs of life, yep. learning from the mistakes and getting wisdom in the lows, enjoying the highs and, and, and celebrating that accomplishment appreciation. That's what life's all about. Put this on. I, nice. I, said that I put this in the Slack. I queued this up. For Believe you. it or not, to, to to give you the background too, who sent this to me? No, way. Jamie sent Jamie. that shit to me. And nice, she's like, good job, Jamie. Of, she was. I thought of you when you when when I when I saw this, I had to show it to you. So put it on here. That's awesome. Yeah. You lose certain homies because it's called closing the gap. This is the gap when we start. And this is the gap as you grow. Notice how you grow and they don't. So how do you close the gap? You got to come back down. When you come back down, you lose. So you got to keep going up. That's why closing the gap got to be them catching up to you. And if they don't catch up, you got to leave them behind. Damn, that's, I mean, that's some real shit right there. Oh, yeah. From Snoop D-O-double-G. And Jamie for curating that for yeah. us. Appreciate you. But like, that's one guys like, look, if you're going to be on this growth journey with us, right? This is even with the dogs and stuff like that. Maybe you're in a group of people who goes to the dog park and let your dogs run wild and be stupid and all this. And you start doing this dog psychology stuff and you start working your dog separately. And then that, and they're like, come on, just come back to the park and do this. And they don't want to grow. You may not, you may have to leave them behind yeah. and start being a more efficient dog owner. Yeah. That's just how it's going to be. But this happens in life. It's like, the reason I sent that, is, uh, Jamie sent that to me, where she said that, because I, I was saying some things like this of like sometimes that I feel like with the team, and this is me being transparent, is I'm putting in all this work and I feel like sometimes I'm just separating from them too yeah. much and I bring myself back, which is not the right way thing to do. Because no. then, I'm, then I'm like slowing it down and, and giving the team this false sense of mm-hmm. a belief that, that I'm going at a slower pace. You're stumping, you're stumping the growth of you and the business. Come on guys, by doing catch up. That. Instead of like, I'm going yeah. and I'm going to, I'll give you the stuff. I'll give you the reasons why. Come on, let's go. Yep. We need you. I need you. And if you can't keep up, this is part of the deal. Then you got, I got to leave you behind, which yep. means you got to go find another place to work, which is going to be a uh, lower performance, lower expectation type of place. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. And it's hard to do that in life. Oh yeah. You know, that's going to happen with yeah, you do that with family, family, dude. it's going to happen with friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had your friends from back in the day and they haven't really grown, haven't done shit. And you right. start doing your thing and you start realizing, damn, I don't really have that much to talk about with this person. Yeah. I want to talk about like, are you going to, um, what are you going to do with your income this year? Are you going to put it in the S and P 500? Are you going to build something? Are you going to buy a house? Are you going to invest in something? What are you going to do with it? And they're like, what money? I work for minimum wage. What do you mean? I'm still doing the same thing. It's like, oh yeah. And it's like, you want to talk about drinking? It's like, nah, like 10 years ago, maybe. But you're still doing that shit, bro. I don't yeah. want to talk about that. You know, like, you want to talk about partying? Eh, I want to talk about different partying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I want to have, like, I don't want to just go to the local bar and get drunk like I right. used to. Waste my life away. I would rather have an event with the whole pack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have everybody come and we throw on a huge party Actually, to celebrate how awesome we're doing with dogs. Dude, you said something really cool. I know, I like I like the idea of what you just said now. But you said something recently. I think it was yesterday. You were like, it would be great to have like a little shindig or like a little get together where we like actually did some dog stuff, like dog watching, like videos and stuff like that, yeah. and like had a little barbecue or something with, yeah, the, I with the staff. That. 
it would be cool to do that. Like, so that's uh, awesome. Because you're still doing growth stuff. You're yeah. still doing like, you know. Look, I mean, I, I, I sent to Dana yesterday. We were talking about like everything. And I sent to yep. Dana, one of our trainers. And by the way, our trainers are, I, I'll put them against a lot of people mm-hmm. when it comes to skill level and knowledge, especially mm-hmm. uh, understanding and energy. And how to work with people, energy, their mentalities and all that. But I texted Dana yesterday and I said, um, this is again, always wanting to, cause look, I, I'm doing it myself. Right. And, but I want to help my team grow and get better. So I'm, I want everybody like starving for growth. It's the, because we are, we are actually all, every, all humans are, it's just a matter of if you understand it or not. Yeah. But I said, Hey, sorry to bother you on a Sunday. Let's try and pick a time and day each week to work on a skill, whether it be a new one or getting better at one. Nice. So that could be one like, Hey Dana, let's work on puppies. Yeah. You know, or hey, Christian, or hey, Dave, or hey, Daniela, or hey, Devin, or hey, Jet, whoever. I want to work on puppies. Let's work on puppies. And they're good at puppies. Like, I would, I could leave and go move to fucking Australia for the next year. And we could do puppy programs and we'd be killing it in the puppy thing, right? Yeah. However, do I want them to grow and get better? Of course. Yeah. I want to give them the opportunity that I had in life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, with, it's a little bit different because with Caesar, Caesar, when I met him, he's a world known celebrity, right? The known as the best dog trainer in the world, right? All this thing. So to go get it from him that he, he's not going to just go give it to anybody. He wants to give it to the people who are like, who want to learn it, who want to put the effort in to really understand it. So I had to go out of my way of try to find and uh, look, this is, here's a little piece of advice for people. You want information from somebody. I say the volunteer thing and this and that, that's the first step of it. Then the next step is to try to understand that individual and see what would be the right time for me to ask yeah, a question. Yeah. You know, how should I ask the question? How should I listen to the question? Should I follow up with that? And that's being able to understand people too and be able to see that stuff and learn. So I was always good at reading people, but that's like, again, I think if you take positives out of it, I was in that social world for like a decade. Yeah. Basically since I was 17, from 17 to like 32, let's just say 15 years. I was highly involved in the social thing. So I learned people. I still was able to get a skill of understanding people, right? So I was able to understand from Caesar, but that's one that you can take time to understand and say, how do I get this in Is this the right question? Holy shit, Caesar's talking to that person over there. I'm stopping what I'm doing and I'm gonna stand at a distance and see if I can hear. I'm gonna actually act like I'm on my phone and just listen because I don't wanna make it awkward. You know, like yeah. things like that. Or Caesar come, so how, what'd you learn today? Every day, by the way. So what'd you learn? Yeah. To this day, like mm-hmm. we'll be, he'll be doing something. So what'd you get out of that? Yeah. And that's what I love about him is it's just like always keeping you accountable, right? Like always. He's like, asked me, he's like, he's asked me that before. He's like, um, so what'd you learn? Well, not necessarily like that. Cause I'm, I'm a little bit different. I, I do, um, the media yeah, stuff, yeah. but he's like, so have you gotten anything out of all of this? Yeah. And I was so like, what would you get out of the it? amount of stuff? What that have you gotten out of that? Literally, literally coming into that world with Caesar in the dog world, TCW, that's yeah. how I initially started working with him. Changed my life, dude. Yeah. Changed my life. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. here working with you now, but it just changed my life. How Crazy. many people, too? This has changed the life. Oh, yeah. So, like, it's, you know, most people think they're going to, to Caesar's thing. Okay, so I'll, we might as well give Caesar a little promo, too, that we're doing TCW in September. Oh, the shirt? The shirt's not enough? Huh? The shirt's not oh, enough? Shit, I didn't even realize. <laughs> the shirt's the funny not thing enough. is, is like, the, okay. It's the same so color our, as your Caesar, shirt. do not take this the wrong way, but uh, Cassie's not. Is she Cassie? Thank God I can say it. I went to look for my, I have no joke. Uh, 20 uh, Matty Ranch pack leader yeah. with the Matty shirts, yeah. the Navy one. And well, you, I, you I have 40 the of the Caesars. <laughs> no, no, none. Oh. There was none there, and I see the Caesar one. So it's just like normal for me. Oh, yeah. that's not available? Caesar shirt on. Yeah, or yeah. today, I feel like, I lit- this is my day. It's literally like when I'm going to dress almost every day, aside from going to wherever. I'm like, I open my one drawer. Left side is the is the pack leader Matty thing, and then the other side is the Caesar shirts. <laughs> same exact shirt because yeah. I told Kim to get these shirts because yeah. they're awesome. Yeah, but same exact material. It's just this is Caesar's way. These <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, eh, t- it's like Mr. Rogers. Like what Mr. Color Rogers, but wear? it's also um freaking Zuckerberg. Apple Zuckerberg. No, not Zuck. Uh, yes, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg the same wa- thing. was wearing the same clothes, but like, also forever. the guy from Apple. What's his fucking name? Uh, Jobs. Yeah, Steve yeah. Jobs is the same, dude. Yeah, he would yeah. wear a turtleneck and like jeans because makes he was it like, so easy for you. You don't have to think about it. They they they're so critical. That's like me with my freaking making. black shirts. Yeah, that's their that's their thing about decision making. Yeah. They're like, I don't want to waste one of my my high decisions or a good decision on a t shirt. Yep. I want to just grab one and go, and then make a use that decision for should we invest in this new tech or not? Yeah. You know, that's what they're thinking. 
So I do I the really same thing with food, by the way, too. I just treat it like fuel, and I'll eat the yeah. same thing over and over. Yeah, I know. Something that's really good for me, and yeah, I keep it pushing. Um, I forgot what I was, but whatever. Anyway, it was the we were saying about Caesar the September TCW. Oh yeah, see, uh, September is a TCW coming up. It's on Caesar'sWay.com now. I'm pretty sure. So, and then we were also doing one in November. So I plan to go on both of them. You know, things can change out of nowhere. We have so much shit going on here, but my yeah. plan is to be at both of them. Yep. We're doing fundamental one and two. I believe September's already sold out and I don't know what's happening in November. I got to ask him and see what's going on, but I think that's getting close to being sold too. So if you're interested in going to TCW, if you have questions about it, I've gone to fuck <laughs> more than anybody, but I would yeah. say 20 something. Huh? 20 something way more dude. It's like, if you, if you add in like a one and two, if you figured for, for it's been eight years and you figured I did, let's just say four, four times a year going out. But some of those are doubles because we yeah. do one and two, but let's just say, even on if average. it's just four times a year on average over eight years, it's 32 workshops okay. already. Yeah. And that's doubled up. So I'm probably in like 50 workshops or something yeah. like that. I think at one point I was already at like 40 and I was like, Oh, I'm on like 50 now. Mm -hmm. But how much gratitude I have that oh, I get to be there. Yeah. For real. Number one, the Me gratitude too. to be able to, share with the students who come there who were who i was once in their shoes trying to learn and what caesar i've learned from caesar and my experience to share that with them and give it to them but also to be able to sit in when caesar's talking to the staff and assessing a video or i'm sorry uh talking to the uh the students and assessing a video or someone asks a question or how he did something with a dog i'm literally like in studying i mean i'm just yeah. like and, and look at this point 50 fucking workshops later the person asked the question, I'm like answering the question in my mind and almost all the time, it's pretty similar to Caesar's. He sometimes has a more eloquent way of saying it because yeah. he's been doing it forever and I'm a fucking New Yorker who mm -hmm. talks like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's just so fascinating to see. I was like, wow, I'll be thinking like, that's a different way to do that, to give that, to give that answer and I really like that approach. Right. That's the one that I, that I really like, the way he explains things is like, I think it's to say it is one that I've gotten so much value out of over the years. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of Caesar is pretty methodical. Yeah. I can say that. Yeah. Um, he's like, he slows things down yeah. significantly so that where he can explain things, even though he's looking for the words. Yeah. He slows it down significantly so people can understand it. They don't understand. People don't understand how much. So what I was saying is most people go to that workshop trying to be like, I want to learn about this dog training thing. I want to learn about dogs. I want to be like Caesar. I want to be the next dog whisperer. Okay what they realize is they go there and they learn about themselves yeah. as a human. And that's what I love the most about it. And that's, what I'm trying to make sure anyone who works with us, I want to tell them, Hey, I just want to remind you of what's going to be happening here indirectly. So you don't think about this as like a chore that you just have to do for your dog. So it's a little bit better behaved. The things you're going to be doing with your dog of patience and calmness and follow through and, um, uh, practicing taking your time at the door and not getting angry <laughs> and uh, adjusting your frustration. All those things that you're going to be doing are high quality things for a human being to have. So you're getting to indirectly grow yourself. And what did we say before that Tony Robbins touring the world? Everybody wants growth and progress. So through your dog, you can grow and get better by learning dog psychology and applying. It seems like the direct thing we're doing is helping the dog. But in reality, the things we're doing are actually indirectly helping ourselves. Yeah. Look at like, like with the session with Rooney yesterday, I said, so we, we, I said it at the front door, one of Rooney's big, he's a little Dotson who would go screech his face off and go absolutely bananas in the elevators to the point where like people were like, are you killing the dog in the yeah. elevator? And it was, um, fuck, I'm like having brain fogs today. Oh man. Really bad ones. I don't know what it is. I gotta figure out what I ate now. It's causing all <laughs> it's this like shit. Eating. Um, uh, Oh, but I said, how this is what it was. So yeah. I said, how many times? Because his big issue was thresholds. Like, so what was happening was inside the apartment, it was starting already. He would, they would get the leash out and start putting it on. He'd start working himself up, fly through the front door, get to the elevator, and then he's ready to explode as soon as that elevator gets there. So I said, we, we spent how long at that front door? Maybe 10 minutes? At least. Trying to slow him down, slow him down, slow him down. No, bring him back. No, bring him back. No, bring him back. I said to them, I said, think about this. How often do you think in your life you would ever be standing at a front door? waiting like this patiently mm -hmm. before you even just get to the elevator. It's, and then you're going to do the same process there. It's 3.33 on May 3rd, by the way. 5.3. Uh. <laughs> There's a 5 there, too. Yeah. 3.33 on 5.3. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how yeah. long would you – normally the people would Like how long that, would you be standing you know? there doing that? You wouldn't. So yeah. the dog allows you and reminds you, to hey, in down. nature, you, you New York people and you New Jersey people, you got to slow the fuck down. You guys are yeah. way too fast. You're, too, you're already out the front door of the lobby and I haven't even got the leash on, you know, so slow down. 
the, then the, the brain slows down. The brain fog thing for you, by the way, too, will will help uh, slowing things down for yourself and oh, just yeah. like thinking things through. Like well, it's, it's all also, good. If you forget it, it's all good too. But it's also way. something too that today. Remember how much we were talking about stuff for a while. I was talking about a lot of shit down before before this yeah. thing. So it, uh, I spent a lot. And then I came oh, up yeah. here. I go, it's hot up here. And shit. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I know. Dude, you were just talking for two straight hours downstairs <laughs> on fire. You know. All right, dude. We're, I'm going to help shit. you wrap this up. Yep, let's um, wrap it up. Real, real quick before okay. we go. Last thing that I want to tell you is, again, thank you for everything that you're doing for the yeah. dog world and for thank the you, humans bro. alike. Thank you, bro. You're part it of means it. means a this lot. Is, this is the whole thing because without – look, this is what I'm saying with that kid said about the power of the group and the yeah. pack and stuff like that. Like yep. I can't do this shit on my own. Yep. I don't know how to do this fucking mics and all this stuff. So I have Adam here who's – Look, at the end of the day, no matter anybody here, they have to be on the same energy. This is the most important thing to me. And some are, some are not totally there, but they're learning. And they're, we're, we're going through the process with them, and they're open-minded to it. That's all that matters to me. But it takes a, the team to make the dream, right? The teamwork, yep. dream work, right? Yeah. So we need the pack together. And you guys are part of our pack, too. We need you guys to help us spread this message around the world because the world and dogs need us. And like I said to Cass, Cass yeah. what, remember when I said to you during the, the – um, the, the vet show yesterday when I like got all weird and like st looked at you and you looked at me and I was like, the dogs need us. Yeah, we were going to record the, the blurb. Yeah, so that was gonna, we have to do that still. So she was going to say you record the blurb because it was all about, again, the vets that are, that, that, that all these dogs are eating all this shit and like, and, and one of the dogs in the show died because yeah. they ate stuff, something. I got his life. And you know what really was the thing for me? They showed a picture of the dog and I see a prong collar on the dog, like that, like this low on the neck with the connected to no leash, just on the dog. I'm like, wow, what a, what a dangerous thing that is. Cause the dog yeah. could run in and puncture or whatever. Anything could happen with that. Why is the thing still on the dog? Like yeah. that, you know what I mean? Like little things like that. And I don't see it. So, so look, most people would say, what the fuck is wrong with that owner? How could they blah, blah, blah. I saw it. I said, the dogs need us. They need our help. And how we're going to help these dogs is by educating people. Cause mm -hmm. these people just don't know. You think those people want to kill their dog? No, no. I don't really don't think yeah. they did. I mean, maybe I hope not, but I don't think they did. And the dog ate something and they brought it for surgery and they wanted to help it and they weren't able to help her. Yeah. People, people are too busy fighting, um, amongst each other and they're not really like doing instead of helping instead of helping. It's like, dude, just, let's just help each other out. It's the media and it's, it's, you know, mainstream media is, 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 is just promoting the hell out of this division. Yeah. And, but that doesn't have to talking be talking about all the hateful things, but that doesn't have to be a reality. What's, what's you know racism? What I mean? Hateful. What's yeah. sexism? Hateful. What's, I mean, any of these things, hate what's, yeah. um, canceling people hateful as far as I'm concerned. What, like all this stuff is just, it's coming from hate. Yeah. And anger. We we want attacking other people's uh, attacking other people on over and in over behind a screen attacking other people. Yeah, and trying to bring people down. That's we, what we're, that's what this world is coming to. We want to promote the dogs love. Saying? Huh? We want to promote love, which is why I say things like true before true, before true I, love. Before I was signing this off, I wanted to say like, dude, thank you, and we're living in gratitude over yes. here. You know. Yeah. We'll put more real of that love, out there. Yeah. Because the real love, look, like what did I say? Oh fuck, I said something. Uh, um. Oh, this is when we were talking about, okay, we were talking about the hiring thing mm -hmm. and like what we've been hearing from people and all this. Oh man, what was it that I said though? Mm, I don't know, whatever. I'll figure out. <laughs> Dog is too strong right now. I'm like no, well, you, you killed uh, this podcast, two hours. Two hour podcast, I'm trying to think murdered. Of um, what it was though that I was there saying. There was a lot of things with the, wait, one of the things that came up with the uh, people not joining right now is like, they're kind of like, they're okay with the unemployment thing. Yes, that's what it, that's what it really was. They're not was really like, wanting to go after what they want in life. Yeah, and it's like gets a little bit for me. I'm like, this is amazing what's happening in this world where like people are more more interested in sitting on a couch and having the government pay for them. Yep. Than and 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 feeling sorry for themselves and being a victim. Than, oh, the true love thing. That's mm. what I was gonna say. Okay, that true love thing is like what I was saying there was like, look. When people are applying to work with us and something like this happens, right? Where they're, I see something that I'm like, wow, this person is making such an error in life. And this is like hard for me, but they're not my employee. They're not a friend. They're not a family. So it's like, what I would love to do is this, but I don't want to, it's also some, to a degree, a waste of time if someone's not interested in it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And but you're learning, you learn. But I was to saying to you guys, uh, and I was saying to Cassie, I was like, look, what I would love to say to this person is like, you know how much you're fucking up right now? You don't see this right now, but you're living like a poor person. You're living like poor mentally, poor financially, poor. Like you're just living in a, in, a, in a victim and in a scenario where 
that, that my point is, is telling them this thing would be the true love. The fake love would be like, be like, oh, it's all good. Like, yeah, good luck with your life. You're doing, you're killing it. Like that's fake. Yeah. But, but most people would say that person's the loving one. Right. But the one who says like, hey, you're making a big error here. You have an enormous opportunity at this company and you're letting this bullshit get in the way of it. Yeah. You're thinking so closed minded. You're thinking so short term. You're not thinking of this through. You're going to miss an enormous opportunity. That's what someone in these people's lives should be saying. But instead they're, nah, I want to stay in my job that I don't like, that I can't grow from, that is just whatever. It just pays the bills. And I'm not willing to take a sliver of a step back for a better opportunity, for a job that I would love, for, to be happy, to be fulfilled. So I understand. Like, look, this is the way the world is going nowadays. And you, I understand it's a different mentality nowadays. Do you think you need to take a step back sometimes to take like a lot of steps forward? Of course. You know what I mean? I think people need to do that sometimes. Yeah. I went, I went, I was making good money working with my dad. Yeah. And then I went to making $8 a day. Yeah. Five days a week. I was making $40 a week. Is that a step back? Yeah. Well, before I've worked with you, I was making really good money in uh, the film and television industry, yeah. but I was like, is this sustainable though? Like it wasn't, it was Let's doing, be real. like running around doing that. Like, and, and why, but why did I, it, it, I wish I could say I left because I, uh, I got, right. it was a little bit, yeah. but <laughs> I was like, fuck this kind of thing. But yeah, but yeah, it was something that, yeah, I was making the money, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't see, I didn't, couldn't, couldn't see myself doing this the rest of my life. But so I was like, I'll take steps back. I'm young. I'll figure it out. This is the time to do it now. I'm not going to wait till I'm, till I'm 35, 40, 50, 60 to try to No, Like, Oh, then the saying that I heard the other day is like, when's the best pl time to plant a tree 20 years ago. But since we didn't, when's the next best time now? Yep. So what about now? That should be like a saying. What about now? Yeah. When you, are you going to start working with your dog? What about now? You learned a lot of the things from watching other people and you adopt it as your own. But I appreciate that because you're you're learning it nonetheless and you're sharing it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where you got it from. No, no, no. I, I want to really share it. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I've it. had the privilege of being around a lot of high performance people. Yeah. You know, people who have really made. I mean, look, if he, we just took Caesar and said that was the only one. The guy came, he, he crossed the border and became the like a national TV show, Emmy nominated, known globally, global tours, like new show coming out in August, by mm -hmm. the way, for you guys, just to know. I'm so pumped about that. Heck yeah. But like, you know, being around someone like that, there is a lot of sh clues there on what life is all about and what works. Most people don't want to look at it. They want to just shame, shame people like that. And say, yeah, easy for them and make excuses and be a victim and be a fucking poor me mentality. I was one of them. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to say like, like to people. I'm not trying to be like, I'm better than you. I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I used to be just like it. And I realized that way sucks. It seems good on the surface, but long term, it's a loss. It's a big L. Because look, some of the people who have applied here and, and we've actually offered, right? And we're like trying to get them to get on. Not that we're trying to get them on. We've offered them a position, right? Yeah, right. In my opinion, they're thinking way too short term. And in the end of later on in life, they're going to say they're going to have that thing, which is my biggest fear in damn life, right? Is regret. Mm -hmm. What Got if you. I would have just taken that yeah, leap yeah. of faith and tried that? Yeah. You know, and do imagine, we, imagine this. Imagine we end up, which is going to happen, by yeah. the way, with with Matty Ranches or whatever we end up calling them all over the globe. Right. We're a, we're a global brand. We're helping everybody. Da, da, da. And that person looks like, let's just say like 10 years from now, they look holy shit, I could have been part of that. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't willing to give up this little thing right now. I wasn't willing to give up uh, the night with my, with my, with the guys. Yeah. I wasn't willing to give up um, the, the, the Sunday brunch with the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't give that up. Uh, I'm, but I'll, I'm willing to trade that one thing <laughs> for five days of doing something that I'm not passionate about, I'm not interested in, I don't really like, and I'm not really going anywhere with. So I can have my drinks. That's what I was doing. I mean, I was yeah. saying I'll trade all that shit to be able to just go out and get hammered every night. It just sucks. And it goes nowhere. My point is it's never ending and it goes nowhere. And it's society though, too, that tells you know that, that you need that car. That's that why you I don't need feel that bad. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a little bit out of our hands because this is what we've been conditioned yep. to thinking that that's happening. I agree. So that's the hard part is yeah. like, that's why I'm not, that's why I'm just, so you understand, I'm not angry at anybody. Right. Right. Like I, I, 
in a weird, in a weird way, you're accepting it. Kind yeah, of like, it is. Like, yeah, I, I can see. You have to be because, look, I can't change the globe in the snap of my fingers. I wish I could make everybody motivated and inspired and willing to hustle and take action, live the, live the life they want and make dreams happen and all that stuff. But I can't make people do that. Yeah. I can try to inspire people to do that. Hence what I'm doing here because mm-hmm. I'm the living fucking breathing example of, of like kid who grew up like pretty good way, played sports, went to college, got involved in like once the college career ended, got involved in let's party. I started the party before that. Don't get me wrong. I was definitely the, the, a little bit of the social butterfly back then and continued on and just got more extreme. And that's how I was living my life. And everything was living for the night, living for the, the drinks, living for the party, living for what's the weekend. Yeah. And when you're in it, it seems good. It's just like being in like a shitty relationship. You're like, I, don't, I can't live without this person. Yeah. You know, I actually said this. I mean, this might be a little bit fucked up, but, but this is not all, not all, but some of the people who worked here, who I would say to myself, like, what am I going to do without them? Right. How am I going to deal with this? Like, blah, blah. And then they end up not being here and you're like, this is much better without them, to be honest. And it's not all people. That's not all. Don't get me wrong. And I have a good relationship with a lot of the people who, who have worked with us and all that stuff. Right. But yeah i don't know it's just it's just one of those things when you're in it it's very hard to see it you know what i mean you're in a shitty relationship it's hard to see it yeah but it it, what you 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 have employees who aren't performing but it's like hard to see it and see what it would be like without them yeah and see what it would be so being in it is the hard part but that's why in my opinion it's so important to have real fucking people around you in your life who who hold you accountable who will tell you the real truth about things and not be like well, you know, and then it's okay. And then that's bullshit. It's like, yeah, well you fucked up. So what could you have done anything better there? That might've been 99% that person's fault, but could you have been 1% better? Let's focus on that. True. Let's do that. So that's the thing is like, like it's all those things is when you're in it. So are you actually trying to look, you know what I mean? Are you trying to get the best information? Or are you trying to find information that works for you? You know, like if I'm look, where focus goes, energy flows. Yep. So if I'm focused on being a victim and saying there's no other chance, I'm, there's no way I can do things, then I'm going to find victim people. I'll find victimhood. I'll find it online. I'll be staring at the news channels. I'll be the world's ending because of the virus. You know, I'll be in, living in fear and anger, just like everybody, right? To me, that's not the best way to live. I don't think it's a good way because I've lived that way. Yeah. Again, I'm just speaking from experience on this shit. Right. I think it's so important. So you got to want to see it. And listen, I know it's, it's fear. It, it's can definitely bring upon fear, um, to go. Th- did you, did you see that thing that when you were just going through my stories, this is the last thing I want to show on the stories. That was this one. Yeah. That, so I wanted, I actually did want to bring that up. It's really good. Yeah. About the comfort zone and all that. Like the first phase is what the first phase there is what out of comfort zone, the fear stage. So what I'm saying with that is it's fearful to look at yourself because you don't, you, you don't know what's going to be there. You know you're feeling out of balance. Like your higher self knows you're out of balance. And it's telling you, you got to look within, man. You got to look within, girl. You can see that you got to check this shit out. But it's like, I know, but I'm really scared of what I'm going to see and what I'm going to have to deal with. I'd rather just not know or just avoid it. But then it never leaves. It never goes away. You never deal with it. You never overcome and then can then live your best version of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I think that shit is so important is to like, there's no better time than now because it ain't going to get better by not dealing with it. Go psychology channel. Yep. I'm going to pull this up for you. Yep. This is how it goes. Here we go. It should happen. Look at that thing. So which zone are you in? Look at that. This is one that I saw from this guy yesterday on Instagram and it was like comfort zone. Feel safe and I'm in control. What's the next phase? Fear, fear zone. zone. Wow, that's interesting, dude. Right? So I'm, 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 I lack self-confidence. I find excuses. Look at that shit. I'm affected by everyone else's opinion. Yeah. I can tell you I went through that phase. Oh, yeah, 100%. For sure. Big time I, I was kind of, to be honest with you, bro, I was just there not that long ago. Yeah. Like very recently. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then you get into the learning zone, right? Now we're in deal with challenges and problems. We, so you're dealing with it now. Yeah. So once you get out of the fear, you say, oh, I'm fearful to act. Because by the way, fear is all the fear up until the event. Mm-hmm. And then you do the event. And it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So, so the fe- I'm going to go skydiving. You're fearful. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And then you jump. The fear is gone. Now you're in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So once you once you actually look for what's inside of you and say, oh damn, I do have these things. I do have these traumas. I do have these things that happened in my childhood. I do have all this crap, but it's no one else's responsibility to deal with this shit but me. That can be very fearful, mm -hmm. right? That can be, holy shit, I feel overwhelmed. Or it can be empowering as fuck because guess what? You don't need anybody. You can do it yourself. It's you. You yeah. can look at yourself. You, it's, it's you to deal with. You don't need others to deal with. You can do this yourself. You have to look within and say, wow, if I'm being truthful, this. And then you can, yes, then you can go get the help from others in certain scenarios. I need to get better with my dog. Let me go to the, Steve and see what he says. I need to get better in my mind. Let me go get Leah and get hypnotherapy. You know what I mean? I got to learn about forgiveness. Let me go call Jesse and see what he says about forgiveness. Yeah. I got to learn how to get more. Let me call Pena. Let yeah. me go. I got to learn how to um, overcome this. I'm going to go see Tony Robbins. Like, but, that, but you have to understand it first, what you have to do. That's in your learning zone. So then you extend your comfort zone. You're acquiring new skills. You understand how to meditate now. You understand how to deal with a cold shower. You understand how to calm your emotions when someone says something that's triggering and all that shit. And then growth zone is a fucking great one to be in. But that's like almost to agree what I was saying to you yesterday about like, dude, this is so amazing to see all this shit like come Happening. to fruition yes. and happen. I feel like I'm like right in that learning growth thing. And I, I, and I think that in my opinion, you can like, this is the, the proper way to go right through it. Yes. Right. But, but you can be in growth and then you might go back to learning. Right. For yes. certain things yes. or certain attributes, of course. or you know, you, you, you dealt with um, your fear of public speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just say, right. But then what you never dealt with was your fear of spiders. Mm -hmm. So I got to go back to the fear zone. I got to, uh, I don't like spider. Uh, uh, well, why would I ever be with spiders? Excuses and shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, you're, you're, it's okay to be like scared of spiders, other people's opinions and shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't handle spiders, no confidence, but then you finally fucking do it and put a spider in here. Like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And the person takes the, the spider off and you're like, yeah, it was bad, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. If I'm being honest, you know, didn't yeah. bite me. didn't kill me. But that's the, that's the shit. You find your purpose. You live your dream. You set goals and set... I, was, I didn't even see the set goals thing. I was just saying you set goals, and set, awesome. which is your dreams, yeah, and then yeah. you go through it. Set new goals. You conquer your objectives. That's where you're just in flow. Yeah. When you're in growth zone, you're in flow. It's just you're on the rise. But you got to get through this shit. This is, the, this is where most people live. It's right here. Yeah. That's it. But you can and think about it. Once you once you cross that threshold, bro, it's like such good things happen. But it's the comfort zone and the fear zone that keep you trapped. It's just a better way to live. I don't know. What, uh, keeps you trapped in there. It. Yeah. I really don't know how else to say it. To, yeah, it's just trapped in fear. Yeah, and so, comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, the fear is what traps them in the comfort. Because so look, where is comfort trapped with them? Yeah, inside fear? fear. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, that's Pretty crazy. Cool. So cool, bro. Right? Honestly, this is like super. I relate to this big time because of dude. It's just recently the pa the past two three years of us doing stuff together. We've gone through all of those zones basically yeah. together. It's like and that, that's why it's like these moments of reflection just pop in. And so how funny is it, right? When I'm sitting in the car. Yeah. We're just sitting in the car driving, where my brain has a, the opportunity. This is why meditation is so down. important. Yeah. Yeah. Slow down so your brain can catch up to you. Yeah. Like these thoughts, we allow our thoughts to just go, 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 go. All thought, 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 thought. Oh, sleep. Wake up. Thought, thought, thought. Where's my phone? I got to get right to my, uh, like zombies, mm -hmm. dude, to this fucking phone and all this crap. But when you give your body a moment or your mind a moment to relax, even for me, just sitting in the car and going for a drive back yeah. to the ranch yesterday, it was like, like, dude, isn't it crazy to see like our reflection? Like, wow, like how this shit is actually coming to fruition. Like this whole idea of this camp and this puppy thing that we were talking about is like working exactly, Tapping. not exactly, but like Nobody's it's happening. working. It's, 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 it, the idea is correct. Yeah. And we, and you're seeing it come to fruition. You're seeing these, the, the dreams and the, and the, the goals we set and the objectives we have were like starting to happen. And it's like, wow. So all that it, for me, it's like, like it's hard for me to explain this because it was like living one way. And then this way is, it's just, how do I like tell people like, like, God, it's so good over here and yeah. it sucks over there. Even though on the surface, it looks like over there is cool as hell. Right. Over here is where it's at. I'm telling you. Yeah. And, when, and people, you know, and then the, the opinions of look being affected by opinions of others in the beginning of my career, people say you work too much, dude. Mm -hmm. You're working too much. I was like, maybe I am. I would actually take their opinions because I was fearful. I was like, I don't want to be this like workaholic crazy guy, but I really like being with these dogs. You know, I really like going on media and sharing with these people and stuff. I don't see it as work. Yeah, you, you guys work, you work too, way too much. How many people have told me and Cassie we work way too much? 
You guys work too much. You're too much work. Because you're viewing work. Let's define work. You're defining it as something you don't want to do. We're defining it as something we do want to do. Yeah. That's the difference. So that's it for me. No, that's very true. And you know, awesome. another, <laughs> another thing I always, every time you start to end it, I'm like, we have to end it soon though. Cause I'm about to pit 100%. We're two, two and a half hours in, um, just your power manifestation, bro. This is what you were just talking about yesterday Mine. about like, I can't believe we're doing all these things that we've been talking about. We yeah. want to do, but dude, in the past year alone, the amount of shit that you've manifested into the, into your existence, into your world, like, but you also this. manifest all this stuff for us too. Yeah. It's crazy. Watch this one. Remember I said, show me your friends, show me your, show me your thoughts, show me your future. Nice dude. It's a good one. <laughs> Ended on that one. Show me your mind. Show me your future. Something like that, dude, yeah. is like, show me your thoughts. Show me your, what are you thinking about? Well, I'm thinking about how poor me and victimhood. Well, there's your future. Victim. Yep. I'm thinking about how I'm going to help the world overcome their depressions and anxieties and fears and anger through dogs. All right. So it's change your thoughts. Change it's your starting thoughts. starting to happen, yeah, right, yeah. guys? I mean, it's, we're doing it. Yep. You guys are part of it. I can't do this shit without you guys. And that kid told us in the beginning, we need the pack. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fucking power in us. Even though we're, we're not the biggest pack of all yet, we're still a, a pack that's strong. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to have a, sh I, th th this is what I say about my team too. I don't want a, a company of like 70, like average people. I'd rather have a company of nine elite people, strong people. You know what I mean? That's yep. what I want. There's more power in that. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm all proud right. to be with you guys. And I, I'm Me too. so grateful to be able to share this shit with you guys and to be alive to do it with you. Yep. Because, it, it, you know, one day this, I won't be here. One, you guys won't be here. You won't be. It's, it's, this is why we have to enjoy this moment. Yep. Enjoy our time on this planet and give something and leave something for our next generations and after. And think about that when you're making videos and stuff. Because yeah. videos are going to last forever. That's why I love Careful what I what do, bro. Saying. I love what I do. Yeah. I love that what we do together is yeah. like all this stuff is going to last forever. Because I think about that too. I said, I'm like, you know, we're talking about this. And think about how like three generations down the road, my great, great, great grandson is watching this shit being like, that's what our, my great, great grandfather did to start this whole dog mission thing. And that's yeah. why dogs are like, holy fuck. That's so cool to think about. Yeah, it really is. Whatever. That's right, my man. mind. <laughs> Love you, brother. Love you guys. Thank you guys for everything. Have an amazing one. We'll see you on the next episode of the Ask the Pack Leader Show. Love you guys. That's good.